on this episode, guys asked me, hey, what are we doing this week on Stogie Geeks? Are we just hanging out? I'm mean, like, yeah, we're just we're just hanging out. But then we got we, we got Jim McMurray to come back, and we've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about in uh, some news articles. Um, Jose Blanco uh, has been promoted. Mm. Um, JC Newman is celebrating their anniversary. Um, John Daly gets his own cigar. How to cut a chisel. What am I doing wrong because my cigar is bleeding? I got a locker at my lounge, which I, I'll tell you about my locker lounge things. <laughs> uh, could we build our own humidor? Um, I want my girlfriend to start smoking. How, well, how, do, I, how do I do that? Ghost busting, which segues into pipes, which I thought was really super interesting. Um, and celebrities who smoke. My kids have this thing, who's the greatest basketball player of all time? And I keep saying Michael Jordan. And they haven't seen him play. So <laughs> it makes for sad. interesting debate. <laughs> All that and more on this episode of the Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production for security professionals by security professionals. Please visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to all the shows on our network. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have Remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stoy Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stoke Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode number 379 for April 21st, 2023. I'm Paul Dorian. To my left, Mr. Joe Hozempa is here with us. Joe, welcome. How are you? Doing good, man. Excited to be here, as always. Mr. Jason Albuquerque what is here is with us. What is happening, Paul? What's going you know, on, man? No, Joe's over here grabbing the new uh, the new pork tenderloin, the pork tenderloin 2.0, and he's like shaking and dropping it. He's so excited to get this thing going. I, think, so. I thought he stole mine. That's no, right here. <laughs> <laughs> no stealing that, baby. No stealing that. Mr. Jim McMurray joins us remotely. Jim, welcome to the Stoic Geeks. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Happy just, to be here again. That's thanks right. for the invite. Yeah, thanks for uh, appearing again on the show. Uh, I told Jim, Jim's like, I had so much fun. I'm like, yeah. dude, we do this once a month. Like, just join us. He's like, yeah. So join thanks for joining. Fun. You got all, all kinds of stuff behind you that you're you're going to drink. <laughs> you're going to sample all of those throughout the show? <laughs> maybe, maybe we make that a goal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can't wait for an hour and I mean, 50 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> it's afternoon here. I, where you are in California, it is, it's still morning. But, I mean, there's never a bad time for a glass of whiskey. R right. You know, it's the pre-breakfast glass. There you go. Have you not had breakfast yet? What time is this? Gotta be, is it 11? 11 or 10? 10? 10, 10, 10? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there you go. Breakfast is around 12. Breakfast there of champions, whiskey and cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Truth. Joe, I want to talk about your cutter. Mm. 
But it's, I saw this on the. I've I've always wanted one like this, and then like I read reviews and that and shit's fancy. It's like so fancy. Uh, like look at how what fancy. The hell, is that yeah, fancy, Jim? Like it's like something that belongs out of the 1700s or something. Like the handle is very thin, right here. But this the end part has got some weight to it. Yeah, it's a little bougie. It's he yeah, it's heavy on the tip. It could is be. Obviously. It's heavy on the tip. Yeah, it's heavy, heavy on the heavy tip. On the tip. Yeah, so just, just the tip. <laughs> just the tip. Yeah, like the rest of it. See, like it doesn't want to go up. We could go down a rabbit hole based on what that thing that's is. Problem. What that thing could do to a tip. Oof, God. Yeah. It's, it's really cool though. Yeah. yeah. So where, Does where'd your you tip get fit this? in it? I. I it depends on how big <laughs> your tip is, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> My awesome girl. Um, at her words, not mine. I do listen to your show. I don't get how people would listen, but uh, she says, but she says, I noticed on the show you said you were talking to Jason mm. and you said that you wanted cigar scissors. And I says, yeah, I've always wanted like a nice pair of cigar scissors and stuff like that. So for Christmas time, she Googled uh, cigar scissors. And when I opened this up and I was like, well, this is a little bit bigger than what I thought initially. But uh, they're pearl. That's what she said. It's got Japanese. <laughs> yeah. It's supposedly it's got like Japanese stainless steel things going sweet. on. sweet. It, it cuts like three different ways. And, uh. and when it actually guillotines your cigar, it actually bubbles it up a little bit. So oh, interesting. A little bit of the tip of the cigar comes up kind of like mm -hmm. there to kind of mimic almost the way the top of a Cuban would go up. Slanted and then down. The, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Right, so yeah. Um, that was uh, her finding and in, uh, interesting, awesome. interesting. So I carried it around, and uh, every single cigar owner, the when I frequent a lot of cigar shops, uh, they always say like, "Well, that's a little bit big," but they always come to my table and use it throughout the yes. day. Yes, <laughs> and like this is a really <laughs> nice cutter. I'm like, I know that's why I have it. So that's awesome. So there you go. So. Uh, one of those treasures that you know you kind of got unexpectedly and and you really super appreciate. Yeah, because I bought a pair of scissors from my desk here in the office, mm -hmm. and they're just okay. Like yeah, I read yeah. all the reviews on Amazon. Like I, I don't want to go crazy. Like I just want to Amazon myself some some cigar scissors, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. I have the really nice cutter that was like handcrafted sure. and cost over three hundred dollars mm -hmm. that I keep in my desk at home where I work work more often. And <clears throat> the ones I have here in the office. Um, yeah, they're just okay. They're not as fancy as that. The, I can tell you when you when you should cut a cigar and and it's it's yeah. ultra smooth. It's it's awesome. It's a little bougie and it goes great in my coach bag. Because so I want to say I, I look, <laughs> he does he does actually have a coach bag. Yeah. Which is, I was actually looking at a cutter. It, it's almost like the reverse of that. It's like a backward scissor. And Fox Knives makes it. I think it's Fox Knives, that makes mm -hmm. it. and they're pretty cool. I was I almost got one of them, but I now I have to buy another I like cutter. Cool. I like my I like my Lafine's knife, man. Love I know. I need one of those too. I, I need to go it. cutter shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I can, you can never have enough cutters, though. And lighters. Right? <laughs> and lighters. This is true. <laughs> what kind of cutter you got there, Jim? Oh, just a run of the mill uh, Calibri. This one's the, just a V cutter. Oh, yeah. Then oh, I yeah. have a couple more straight cutters. The Calibri, Calibri, the Calibri uh, is actually, it's yeah. got some weight to it, right? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty mm. heavy. Yeah, the. Funny thing is, I think I have like probably ten cutters spread throughout the house or mm. in my car, and I can never find them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I keep the the cheap plastic ones in my pocket, in my car, in the outside the garage because like I don't want any of the nice ones. I got the two nicer cutters that I have. Like they're on my desk and I stay on my yeah, desk, yeah. and that's it. Like these on the set. Like yeah. this one's actually not a bad little cheap plastic cutter. It's got a little bit of weight to mm -hmm. it, but yeah. I actually just got a new lighter from so so I belong to a bunch of. Uh, you know, cigar groups. Right? Yeah. And one of them is Veterans of the Leaf. And, you know, they're notorious for just randomly sending you mail bombs of stuff, mm. cigars. And and one of the brothers from uh, Veterans of the Leaf sent me this nice Lotus lighter, man. Mm. Nice torch. It's got a cutter on it. I dig it. I've had it for about a week now, and I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's a cutter, not just a punch? No. So it's a cutter. See how it pops out like this? Watch. I'll show you. Oh, I didn't know Lotus made one with a cutter in it. I, I like that. You can see that, but it pops out. Wow. A guillotine cutter right there. And then it's got nice flame. Triple flame. Yeah. She's I sweet. Had, oh, so I have this one from Calibri that had that. Yeah. And this one was too big to keep in my pocket. They had yeah, a smaller yeah. model that I would keep in my pocket, but it broke. It was blue. Mm -hmm. And the, the cutter actually folded out. Yep. And it was a little like scissor. But this one has a V cutter yeah, on it. Cool. But what happened is the locking mechanism 
<laughs> yeah. Broke because it, it uses so much. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't stay in. But it, it's also like a, a triple. This one needs fluid, but mm. it's also a triple flame, yeah. uh, and it has the V cut. As much as you have your Calibri V cut on uh, on yours, Jim, in one thing. That's nice. They're nice till they break. That's mm -hmm. the. I mean, and it's yeah. really all. I mean, unless you spend a lot of money, over three hundred dollars on your accoutrement. Yeah, like they usually break at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so it's what I find. Although, I mean, I've I've heard of folks who get the SD Duponts, which are very very expensive mm -hmm. lighters, and, and they, they break too. They break too, and they yeah. don't really like them, you know. So. Mm. Oh yeah, I have two Dupont lighters, and mm. both are broken. Yeah, oh, interesting. Sucks. Okay, so that's out the window. Right. No matter what you buy for accoutrements, <laughs> they break. <laughs> <laughs> One of them I won in a contest. Nice. And, and DuPont gave it, you know, it was a giveaway by DuPont. And uh, it was sad because it only lasted a week. Well, that's why. Oh. They, <laughs> it didn't pass the quality assurance test, so they, they gave it away. Right. <laughs> yeah, but what's the retail? Is it like, is it like 1200 bucks for that lighter retail, probably? Yeah. No. No. Though. Some no. are. Some of the DuPonts are 1200 I don't know. No? Do I have it here? They're expensive. I don't know if I have mm -hmm. here or not. Tata next door has the soft flame mm. Dupont. Yeah, those are like eight bills. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, eight hundred. Yeah. I have the Calibri nice. soft flame, which I really like as well. They make an. I don't have it here on set. It's on my desk, but. Um, yeah, I'm looking at twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Duponts are twelve ninety five, eleven hundred. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, Jim, you were smoking. Uh, speaking of cutting, uh, a chisel cigar from LFD. First, how'd you like yeah. it? Yeah. I. Okay, first time I ever smoked a chisel. Yeah. And I was a little weirded out to see this end. I'd never seen it before. I've never seen yes. something like that before. It is weird. And when you first look at it, you're like, what? What is this? This is... Did right. I step I'm like, on this? And what do I do with it? <laughs> what do I do with this end? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> do I slice it? Do I V-cut it? Do, do I do something funky and, you know, on top? You know, what, what do I do? I, I wound up just doing a straight cut. And... I actually enjoyed the cigar a lot. I actually enjoyed that 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 end. Um, uh, it reminded me of like a cig cigarette holder. Yeah, or a pipe or but, something, right? Yeah. yeah. Or a pipe, yeah. It's like the tips you used to be able, the plastic yes. tips you could put on. Yeah. Right. Or, right. Or, or like a, a saxophone. It's like a saxophone, mm. yeah. you know, the, the bit of a saxophone. It's like, yeah. Yeah, and I much. thought the draw would be, you know, too tight, and it wasn't. It was actually yeah. quite enjoyable. Yeah, the LFD chisel is meant to, um, in the pipe world, it's called the fishtail, where with the stem yes. is kind of flat there, too. Mm. So, like, Peterson and Rossi and all these different pipe makers make it. It's meant to mimic uh, uh, pipe smoking, and I think they did a very good job making it organic throughout the cigar. What's the Peterson? What's, is it Pete? Peter, I want to say, is it Pete Peterson? What's his name? Peterson? Peterson. Pipes? Peterson Pipes. Peterson. The, the, One of them, uh, was it Peterson <laughs> that tried to make cigars? Or the, they were like making cigars? I met one of them. I met. I think I met the Peterson guy. He, okay. well, he, he was doing cigars. He came in uh, to a shop and I met him. Hmm. Okay. He was a cool guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm not too sure about... I think it was uh, Peterson. Really? It yeah. was back in the day, but... Yeah. Um, but the chisel, so... When when you posted that to our internal uh, group, Jim, I was like, oh, I'm like, yeah, now I remember we've talked about this before, and it bears repeating, that you can get a punch and mm -hmm. punch the top and punch the bottom of the chisel. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's supposed to smoke and maybe taste differently. It's like a different presentation huh. of the cigar. So wait, uh, straight through? Uh, some people do straight through, yes. There's you multiple know? variations, <laughs> but some... Like, I've done it before where <clears throat> I make a punch in the top, not all the way through, all the way through yeah. and another one in the bottom. Yeah. So the smoke will actually come from both the oh, top and yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Or if you turn it sideways from Well, that's, both the, sides. that's the picture in the article. looks like it has it punched on the... On all the, the way through, I yeah. think, in the article, right? I just pinch the tip. <laughs> and what, the cap comes off? No, yeah, you just pinch the tip of the chisel, and then the cap will go off, and away you go. I think that was their uh, one of their intentions with it. Yeah. I don't know. We'd have to ask La Flor Dominicana, mm -hmm. Delito, uh, Gomez. But I want to say that was a thing where uh, if, like when you're in the the curing barns or wherever, right, and you're like, oh, I don't have my cutter, um, they all have their, like, different methods. And I, I think one of the chiseled things was so you could squeeze the tip like that and the cap would pop off. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I've been meaning to ask this. 
What do you do if you don't have your cutter with you? Mm. Well, that's actually a good question, uh, Jim, because from the rollers that we, Paul and I, have spoke to in the, in, in the various paths, most of them are not as flamboyant as us walking around with fancy cutters and lighters and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. You know, they, they actually just kind of like bite the tip off a little bit and kind of pull it a little bit with the teeth. And, pull the cap off. Yep. And, and, and pull the cap off. Yeah, and then away yeah. they go. And especially like if you're kind of like I'm a twirler when, when I smoke and I also like to let it hang in my mouth too. So at the end, it's kind of chewed up a little bit. That – um. That cap or that endpoint will actually start to separate through your process and smoking and stuff like that too. So, yeah, that's the best way to do it because uh, taking a, a knife is not yeah not recommended. However, when I did have Jason's, I went through a phase where I had that knife there, um, and I was doing V cuts with it, which was so yep, cool. You yep. could actually do like uh, your yeah, V cuts, yeah, yeah. and I'm a like, oh, yeah, that, if you're going to use a knife, yeah. do a V cut. I, I yeah. haven't tried that yet. Yeah, it's so it's that. actually a great. I mean, they're so sharp doing a straight cut. Yeah, they cut. are. I mean, right, they're so right. sharp. Yeah, you don't want to take a steak knife and do it, but one of these, man, that's a good thing. And if you log on to their website and follow them, mm-hmm. like you subscribe to the newsletter. What is this? What is this? What is this They'll give you like a you know ten percent off days or twenty percent off days. So L E L E S L E S F I N E S F I N E S L A M E S They have all different styles. Mine has the map of wrong, mine has it. the map of Cuba on the blade. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. That's the map of yeah, Cuba all on the blade. So oh like yeah, styles. made in France. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I will tell you, uh, maintenance wise, they are a beast to reshopping. You haven't gone through that yet. I actually took mine to a butcher. Yeah, but you want to know what though? The <laughs> well, the blade replacements are so cheap. Yeah, yeah. You just order a blade replacement. Yeah, I it's know. It's like twenty five bucks. I know, but I went to because I was like, you know, I I use a shopping stone next door. Yeah. Because they have a bar next door, mm-hmm. so I used a shopping stone. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. I used another one. Um, I knew I knew one of my friends was an Eagle Scout, so he did it. Yeah, and he did the shopping and thing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, it still doesn't <laughs> cut right because of the groove. Yeah, n- right. near the thing. Right. So I actually took it off and took it to a butcher. So it was a little over the top, but th- that's a true story. Yeah. <laughs> But like I said, the, well, bla- the blade know, replacements like, are so cheap. Yeah, but our friends, uh, like Mike Poor and Larry, mm-hmm. they do the knife making thing. Yeah, and there's a very all, all kinds of different ways to sharpen the sure. blades depending on what it is. Different methods, like there's a an art and a science to yeah. sharpening. In fact, I know a lot of people that have really nice kitchen knives will actually send their kitchen knives mm-hmm. out to get sharpened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is actually, but the first one that I've ever had because I have another one of these. That's about there. Like I'm noticing now when I'm when I'm starting to cut it, it's getting a little dull. Maybe I'll talk to Larry, see what he thinks. Yeah, yeah. If, like if I need to, to sharpen, if that. I need to sharpen something, I ask Michael Larry. Yeah. <laughs> like, how would you guys do this? Mm-hmm. When I need to sharpen my kitchen knives, I ask my wife. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and does she sharpen them? Oh yeah. Mm. And does she have us any special sharpener or? She has a couple stones, mm-hmm. and gotcha. then uh, yeah. Like I, I like, I went to cut um, uh, some steak yesterday or two days ago, and I took out the knives I was going to use. And she's like, "No, no, no! Give me a few minutes. I'm going to go sharpen these." Nice. She it walks off, comes back. They're all nice and sharp. It's awesome. You married a keeper, man. You married a keeper. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I should be afraid that she likes yeah, lunch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> stay in the good graces. <laughs> That's right. I think we all try and stay in the good graces. <laughs> so, so Paul, I'm super interested in this. This is an article yeah. that I really, really, really wanted you to talk about when it popped up. My cigar is bleeding. Talk to me about that. Yeah. And it's interesting. What? So... <laughs> exactly. That's exa- when I saw the headline. That's what I said. <laughs> I thought, it, and I thought it was interesting that they described this as bleeding, as mm-hmm. it almost had a red color. And if you look at the picture, it does. It, I mean, it, you could. It does look like a, a deep reddish brown color. Uh, they came from the end of the cigar, and this mm-hmm. person had punched the end oh. of their cigar. It was just tar buildup. Tar, really? Yeah. 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 Right. And that's that's really all it is. Kind of anticlimactic at that point, but um, <laughs> but I mean, as as you know, many of us know, if uh, you punch a cigar or you don't cut deep enough into the cigar, mm-hmm. and depending on the tobacco, the oilier the tobacco, right, uh, more tar buildup will happen, uh, especially as the end gets wet. 
Uh, and that can, that's for, for me, that clogs the cigar. I think it's really annoying, so I have to cut it again. Yeah. Usually I just cut it again. And that this is the solution to that person's problem. Right. Uh, is you, you had to cut the cigar, not this, punch this is, it. This is similar to the stuff that people who partake in recreational cannabis activity get that get that little tar tar yeah tar is a thing i mean <laughs> thing. cigars pipes marijuana it's, it's all yeah it, right. tar is a, it is a thing you're burning a, a similar mm -hmm. substance right uh from the the tar standpoint right um but yeah so i mean i think the you know the psa is if you're going to cut a cigar cut us you know, know how to cut a cigar both exactly. with the chisel and the know what Mm -hmm. type of cut goes with each cigar and i think you only get that knowledge through just experiments just trying mm -hmm. it out um i know like for padron cigars like this padron that we're smoking now i wouldn't punch the cigar right. generally padrones the way that they construct their caps does not lend itself to punching their caps tend to be very thin yep um and if you punch it it just it falls apart at mm -hmm. the end and they end up cutting it anyway yep um, so I always do a straight cut. I don't even mess with like a V cut or anything. I, Padrones, I'm always a straight cut. Yeah. Whereas other cigars, I might do a punch. I might do a V. I mean, but I thought a straight cut is kind of like that versatile cut. Universal. It's universal. I've been it, straight it works, cutting. It works for everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah both my. That's night, my go-to. Yeah, that's my go-to. But that's why his cigar was bleeding. <laughs> yes. It's great headline fix. though. Yeah. It's totally. a great headline. My cigar is bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where do you want to? Oh. Do we still have a locker at? Uh, at do we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> and I was there last. And I was supposed to be there today, but we were doing the show. Um, I lock picked it, but I didn't steal anything. I promise. <laughs> well, we had one at Havana Club. <laughs> this is what happens with lockers. Yeah. Is I always bring my own cigars in when I visit the shop. I mean, if we were to go to a shop, we would probably have our own cigar, or mm -hmm. more than likely is especially mr j is like i go see mark my mm -hmm. friend mm -hmm. who works in the humidor and i'm like dude what like what do you got that's new special limited release what's smoking good right now is actually kind of a segue of in an interesting reason why i don't smoke out of the locker is because i will ask mark and really anyone in the um tobacco shop what's smoking good now mm -hmm. Because I think cigars reach their pinnacle and their peak. So he may have something that maybe I wouldn't smoke every day, right. but he may be like, hey, that Arturo Fuente, Don Carlos, and the Torpedo. He's like, dude, that box has been sitting for like two or three years, and they're smoking primo right it's now. Fire. It's fire right now. Great. Give me five. Yep. You know? And so that's what I end up smoking. And I never end up going to smoke out of my locker. And mm -hmm. the locker sits there. I mean, we, and we all share the locker at both Nextdoor and Mr. Dis. We have two shops where we have a membership of Stoey Geeks. And we share the, the locker. And none of us ever use the locker. And so cigars will just sit in there. And I pulled out everything from the Nextdoor locker. Right. And it was like five to seven-year-old amazingly aged stuff. I mean, stuff. You've, you've told me about Stoey Geeks having a locker for pretty close to a year now. And mm -hmm. I don't even know where the locker is in Mr. J's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's locker next door. Too. I don't even know which one it is. <laughs> yeah. So I think lockers, <laughs> you know, lockers for us are not a, not a, not a thing. Yeah. That, that, that's a good segue into a question I have. What is proper etiquette? If you have a locker at a lounge mm. and you have a bunch of cigars in there that you didn't buy at the lounge, you just rented the locker. What mm. is the etiquette when you go into the lounge? Should you buy a cigar every time you go in? Should you feel obligated to do so? It's a great question. I'm sure you're going to have three separate answers. I mean, I, yeah. I always do buy something every time I go to a lounge. It's just I always do. I do too, always. Mm -hmm. But okay. I don't get to a lounge as often. So, Jim, if we were to go more often, right? Um, I may put cigars that I buy at the shop in the locker. I may also put some other cigars yep. in in the locker so that they're there for me to smoke. But I'm also, I think one of the reasons you would have a membership, and they all work differently, but just the two lounges we belong to, I'll give, use that as an example. When you purchase a membership, you get a member discount off of cigars and drinks yep. so it incentivizes you i mean you, you could not use that but they're like it, it doesn't make sense right like economically you want to use that so like when you go in yep. or over the course of a year of your membership make sure that we're spending enough <laughs> to justify that that membership yep. spend enough to to exactly. recoup that yeah. you know that, that yeah, and i mean you know i've gone from buying 
20 cigars to I'll buy three and have a few drinks and they're getting yeah. their money, right, for yeah. the visit. It's it's about supporting the the, the local Correct. business, right, yes. and making sure you're going in there spending money. And if that's the case, I don't I don't think they're going to they're not going to bat an eye on you grabbing one of your own sticks that you brought from home out of the locker. I mean, typically if you're a member Jim, you know? no one's going to yeah. no one says anything. Um, but they're just, you know, they encourage you to use your membership. Like the yep. reason you bought the membership is to get mm -hmm. the incentive. So yeah. use those. Like they'll even tell you when you, I think when I signed up for both of them, right? They were like, you, are you going to drink or not? Like, or in, like they know I drink, but like, are you going to come in here and have and drinks? Get, get the, your yeah. money's worth. Right. So like if you're not, or if someone who doesn't drink, they're like, there's a membership for mm -hmm. you for people that don't drink versus people that do. Like if right. you're going to drink. Come in here and drink, and you're going to get five or ten percent. So I don't know what that not drinking piece is like. Do they give you a, a bigger discount on the sticks? I think they take away the drink um, yeah. thing, and that you just get. They have a tier that's yeah. just Got it. sticks, Got and it. it's less membership. Le oh, money. less yeah. less a year. I think it's Got less it. a year. Got yeah. It. Got it. Got so it. they're all different. It's like the 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 lounge I go to every week. Um, I have three lockers there. Um, over the past two years, it started out as. One big locker, then a small locker added, and a, now a second uh, large locker. Um, there's no membership fee, but they consider you a member if you get at least one locker. Mm. And and it paid for it for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And then you get 10% off all your purchases at the store. Mm -hmm. So three lockers, are you using that as like your personal humidor at that point? Or, or, or humid, humid doors, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the the small locker has probably a hundred cigars in it, yeah, yeah. and the one of the larger lockers has non tobacco items in it. Gotcha. Um, in glass bottles. Mm -hmm. um, the second locker is kind of fifty fifty. You know, like there's a couple bottles in there, and then there's uh, a couple boxes in there as well. That's interesting and, that they so, keep non tobacco items in there. But in in California, they allow you to keep liquor inside of a membership system locker? As long as that locker is in a private room. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. Because I think it, the way I understand Rhode Island laws to work, because I've asked about this, mm -hmm. and it's not like I would, every time I go in, take all my own liquor and not right. buy liquor. But if I had... You know, I mean, Jim knows this better than anyone. If I had a nice bottle of special whiskey that I wanted to share with my friends at the lounge, I'm like, oh, I would leave that in the locker, like one, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of and that's, we would, mm -hmm. we'd all try it. It would be kind of more of a social thing. Mm -hmm. We'd still want to obviously give money to the bar, but I, I would, it could be cool to kind of keep a, you know, a bottle in there. But like in Rhode Island, they can't do that. And I don't know if they can't do that if they also allow smoking. Like the laws in every state are really weird. Yeah. So, so the lounge, uh, um, it's a, 20 foot by 24 foot room with a big round table in the middle a bunch of chair a uh, nice big chairs inside mm -hmm. this little room a big screen tv and it and it has a, a key card access only so you have to be mm -hmm. a member to get in yep nice. so you have to be a member to get into the locker area to begin with mm -hmm. right um and then when the door is closed uh whatever happens there in there is a private thing hmm. the lounge isn't selling anything in there mm -hmm. the lounge you know Etc. The lounge itself doesn't have a uh, hard liquor license. They have a beer and wine license. Mm -hmm. So you okay. can buy beer and wine and roam around the whole place. You just can't uh, openly drink hard spirits uh, outside that room. See, that's a priv that's super cool because it is. some of the cigar owners I know are like contemplating doing away with memberships here in Rhode Island. Oh, like interesting. For, for, for really? doing that, yeah. Because, the, the, you know, because what's happening is like the etiquette that Jim asked. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if they buy a box of cigars from the lounge and keep it in, in, in the lounge and get the discount, then what happens? Well, you know, they they don't purchase cigars as frequently as they would right. if they buy mm -hmm. one, etc. <clears throat> yeah. I see Jason's point, too. But if you've already purchased a box of cigars, you've already, first of all, you've already committed to the membership, say mm -hmm. three, four hundred, five hundred a year or more, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but you, you other than the 20% off, you really don't have like any really reason to quote unquote keep a locker, right? Right. So in Jim's case, if they have a beer and wine license and you want a hard spirit or a special spirit or something like that, maybe a bottle of wine, well, well, they have wine, but, but at least, you know, 
it gives them something more. Right, so right. I've often say you shouldn't cancel your memberships because a lot of members, at least next door, like they're remote workers like myself mm -hmm. who need a cigar lounge to do remote work. I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. have a two-year-old and a five-year-old running around. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we just moved i we finally yeah. you know can i can build a shed but that's not on my list for this year so right. it's another calendar year where i'm going to be working remote but i'm working in a members room mm -hmm. that's typically a little bit quieter during the day mm -hmm. and stuff like that um yeah. so like i need that membership you know what i mean just so i can get some 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 work done there too but um at least in jim's case you know it gives them a little bit more of of an incentive to become a member mm -hmm. to have that privilege to bring in you know yeah i mean for, for me it's more I, I wouldn't call it etiquette it's my own personal values that i want to be able to support that local business that's that's right. why i'm doing it i want to be able to support that local business i mean so many brick and mortar we've talked about this so many times on the show so many brick and mortars are getting affected by online purchases yep. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and their revenues are going down so any opportunity that i get to support a local business here in our state to help ultimately my little piece of supporting the economy, I want to do that, right? I, yeah. I, you know, maybe I did buy a box from them and I stuck it in the locker, but is it? I'm going to go buy five more sticks somewhere anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go buy some drinks at a bar anyway. Let me go support my local brick and mortar, man, you know? Yeah, I'm the it's same a, way. It's a values thing. Yeah, see, I'm the same way too. Like, if I, I carry sticks, obviously, in my, in my backpack mm -hmm. and, and, and on myself and, and whichever, but if I go to a shop and I don't really... I'm not really fascinated with their humidor, right? I'll buy a couple of sticks from their humidor and then smoke whatever yeah. I want. Yeah, stuff like that. I do the totally same. Know. Totally. Yeah. But you'd be surprised how many shops even have a sign. Like there's an $8 or $5 cut-in fee. Sometimes it's $10. Yeah. You know, because that yeah. really does happen more often than not where they just, you know, uh, purchase cigar a cigar online, mm -hmm. go in and buy a drink. And it's like, we well, really can't do that because here in Rhode Island, uh, 51% of your revenue in order for you to smoke indoors 51% of your revenue has to come from the tobacco mm -hmm. more than the alcohol so even just that throws it off even the normal cadence of a cigar yeah. uh, where if you have one cigar and two drinks that can throw it off too that's why a lot of uh, shops in Rhode Island that are following this law have to have events where they sell sure. 20, 30 boxes, 40, 50 boxes to kind of off balance those numbers mm -hmm. of just regular foot traffic coming in the store. Now, mm -hmm. now that's that's interesting, right? So, does the state actually yes audit? Yes, they do. Do they really? They do yes, now. They, they, oh they, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because because oh, yeah. because Rhode wow. Island, Rhode Island, which I don't know if you've ever been to Rhode Island, Jim, but with no traffic, you can drive through in forty three minutes. But there are forty. <laughs> there are forty two shops yep. in Rhode Island. We just got a oh my god forty right. forty right. second shop. So I used to be on the radio in Westerly, Rhode Island, which is right on the border of Connecticut, and I lived in Bristol. It's an hour and five minutes, so it's the most diagonal part of Rhode Island where you could drive through, and it's an hour and five minutes. So in a place where you can drive within 40 minutes around Rhode Island, right, without going to, to the extreme outskirts of the state, we have 42 shops. Mm -hmm. One just opened last week. So, and there wow. are three more coming that I know of. Really? Yes. Wow. Yep. Nice. So it's crazy. It, they're like Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the state supports that many cigar shops, I man. I, it's amazing because Massachusetts has five. Now, Massachusetts has five because of the taxation. Yeah, they tax them right out of the state. Where, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so Mass's approach was to tax them out of the state. It's 42% of the uh, retail value of the stick. Um, and in Rhode Island and Connecticut, so the bordering states, it, there's a 50 cent cap tax for any cigar that is over two dollars and eighty seven cents. Which yeah. I don't know why they put two dollars and eighty seven cents, but be, but there, there are some four dollar cigars out there too. Mm -hmm. So if a cigar retails for four dollars, the customer pays four fifty. Fifty cents goes to the state for a cap tax, and then plus the uh, regular sales tax. Which is uh, I, I think in Arizona it's like twenty two cents per stick and that's it. It's just mm -hmm. a flat twenty two cents. Yeah, yeah. See, that's actually called a, a a a cap tax per stick. And I bet you, if you look into the laws, it has a dollar amount that's like you know a buck change or two dollars yeah. and change or something like that. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting because you know we we talk about it all the time about 
brick and mortars having to diversify what they're doing to bring traffic in, right? We mm-hmm. talked about that, making it an experience. And, and one of the articles I put in there was super, super interesting. I mean, you know, just to just to kind of open up about myself, my son is super into golf. He's been into golf since he was about three years old. My father-in-law got him a plastic set when he was a little kid yeah. and just took to it. He's on junior PGA now, you know, he's, he's you know turning 12, junior PGA, travel league, super, super, super into golf. And outside of Detroit in, in Bloomfield Hills, they're actually adding um, a, a golf simulator inside for their members, which is pretty oh, interesting. Oh, nice. That is pretty cool. You know, and, and that's just, a lot of space to take up inside yeah, the yeah, lounge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a golf simulator. I mean, they have pictures of it. It's it's pretty awesome. But they they're adding the simulator to diversify the experience. Where I mean, we know golf. A lot of golfers like to smoke sticks. They like to smoke cigars, right? So um, I, I thought it was a really really cool idea. They're renovating the cigar lounge, mm-hmm. and they said, you know what? Let's put a let's put a golf simulator in here. Mickey Blake's had that in Connecticut. Oh, really? Yep, yep. Nice. Yep. We used to go there in the winter. Was it popular? Yeah, well, pre pre kids, I used to go there every Saturday. Did you really and golf in the winter? <laughs> nice. You know I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, but um, isn't the one in pre-kids. Foxwoods? The yeah. one in Foxwoods has uh, arcade games in it. And you can smoke cigars in it. Is mm. that true? Does it? Can yeah. you smoke cigars in the? Or am I getting them confused it's with a, the cigar? Casinos are weird. Like yeah, some casinos c- are like a total. C- it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a total because yeah. you're, you're dealing with different laws, different yeah. things. I know here locally, you were allowed to smoke cigars, but not at table games. Mm-hmm. So if you were at the slot games or in the bar, but they but then they did away with that. Now there's a cigar bar. Yeah, yes, but that's Mohe- Mohegan is like that. Yeah, Mohegan, but if you, you go to, to the smoke c- in a cigar bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mohegan, there's a dedicated section just for cigars. Now Twin River, mm-hmm. uh, or Bally's there. now, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, because I'm going there Saturday. Yeah, so, yeah. they they <laughs> they have a nice. cigar lounge, but it's really just a circle that's open air, open space. I oh, mean. really? So there's really? no there's no like entrance way. You just kind of like you know. If, Casinos just have like different pathways. Yeah. So you can walk into the bar all different ways. It's like the wolf. But there's no, exactly. There's no there's no like glass or the st- divider in the room to separate the section. It's cigar. just a section. Oh. Oh. It's just a a section, section of the, so mm. that's cool. You know, welcome to Rhode Island. But anyway, <laughs> welcome to New England. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing cigars with me when we go tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. It, you'll be fine until you sit at the table. If you sit at the table, and and again. It's up the subject of the dealer because I've had friends that have gone and they were able to smoke cigars, but right. some of the dealers are like, "Excuse me, sir, you can't have a cigar." Meanwhile, everybody on your left and right is smoking a cigarette. But I'm sure that's another topic for another mm. show, <laughs> but not this one. So I mean, just to <laughs> just so to crazy. put it into perspective, the the cigar lounge after renovations is going to be 3,100 square feet, and they added a simulator. It's a fifty thousand dollar simulator that they added to the cigar bar. Wow. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty cool. Wow. It's pretty cool. I like it. So full 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 disclosure, you know, I only started smoking regularly um probably five years ago. Mm-hmm. And because of a friend I uh who started giving me a lot of David Off cigars, I got more and more into it. And now I'm at the point where of now I have three lockers. At this lounge, <laughs> I visited a lot of different lounges, and I recently just became uh, a minority owner of the lounge I go to. Mm, nice, oh, good for you. You've come a long the, way in five years. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I think the key thing about a, a lounge is it should attract a diverse group of people, mm-hmm. and and not just you know uh, I speak as an old guy, not just old people, but uh, a diverse group of people to come in and to stay and have conversations and to feel comfortable and to enjoy what's available. And that golf idea, it, I, I'm trying to think of how I could include that in the wow, lounge. Wow, look at that. That, look that, at that. That's like a, a, a phenomenal idea. If I ever, if I ever visit everyone plays California, golf. I, want, I, want, uh, I want a free day pass, man. <laughs> 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 but no, it is an awesome idea. Yeah, we talk that, about yeah, it on the show all the but time. But like about... Jim, you've got my gears turning in like a business idea, like what are the other attractions that Mm -hmm. we go to where you're like, ah, it'd be really nice to have a cigar, Mm -hmm. right? Like, is it an arcade? Is it bowling? I mean, there's so much. I mean, I know, I know some of them are not conducive. Bowling, maybe. Yeah. The place in Mm -hmm. Richmond. And again, it's, it's bowling, maybe it's only, um, it only happens obviously when, when the weather permits, but they have like outdoor ax throwing. 
cornhole, yeah. cornhole, wow. that kind of stuff, right? So they have that. They have the the axe throwing cages. They can. You need a go, special license for that <laughs> in Rhode Island, probably, and you're probably oh, yeah. paying a little bit extra tax mm. too. So I mean, and California is no better, if if not worse. <laughs> so <laughs> as far right. as regulation is concerned, so I mean, those probably, are assault axes. So you know, you need a special <laughs> special. <laughs> right. Right. And and then insurance is just going to cost you an arm and a leg to be able to do that too. So <laughs> oh, literally an arm and a leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right. laughs> but you know, Jim, you were talking about. Um, about attracting diverse groups, right? And one of the articles that Paul put in here was, I want to try to get my girlfriend yes. to enjoy cigars. Oh, it was a good segue. Good yeah, segue. well, I mean, you know, for me, it's about how do I how do I bring people into the community? Because the cigar community is such an awesome community. So friendly. We want to help each other learn. We're very, um, you know, we're very uh, serving, right? Like I told you, I belong to a lot of these, a lot of these groups. And I'll get stuff in the mail, unsolicited, nothing like, hey, just wanted to send you 10 sticks and a lighter because you're part of this group, right? And, and people just mm. do that. And it's just such a great community of sharing, sharing information, sharing what you have in your collection. How do we get more people involved? Because there's such a huge stigma around tobacco. Yes. Right? Especially cigars. But yeah, there's such a huge stigma. And, and we talk about it. There's this kind of umbrella view of it. Lumped in with cigarettes, lumped, lumped in, in with, with vape, vape yeah. lumped in with all these other things. When you know we're, we're talking about premium cigars, we're talking about enjoying premium cigars, and it's so different. How do we start attracting people into this community? So I thought that that article was very interesting because how do I get my wife to start smoking a cigar one day? Well, we just it's the answer is simple. Get... We just need pineapple raspberry flavored cigars. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do they make truly cigars? <laughs> White claw cigars. But that gets into so we get in the flavors of any tobacco product and vape. Yeah. Those have come under scrutiny, right? From yep. various state and local governments, right? Mm -hmm. Which is just kind of. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate because I think the. I think again. Politics comes down to appealing to your base. Yep. Your base says tobacco is evil. Yeah. So any legislation we can pass that uh, takes the tobacco out of the hands of children, mm. even though, I mean, maybe vapes aside, right? Mm. The the flavors maybe not as well attracting them. In cigars, I think are in that category where younger folks just aren't no. seeking out uh, cigars. But Absolutely flavored cigars not. come under scrutiny. And you have to define what a premium cigar is versus not a premium sure. uh, cigar as well. I don't think that the youth are attracted to going into a cigar lounge mm -hmm. and paying $5 or more for a premium cigar, whether right. it's flavored or not. I just don't think that's a thing. Agreed. Um, but they have come under scrutiny. You know, yeah. that being said, um, I don't know where the laws stand on flavored cigars today across the states. Where do we stand with that in Rhode Island? Does anyone know? Mm -hmm. In California, Jim, do you know? Flavored cigars, are they banned? It's a no-no. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. So uh, shops in California cannot sell Kids. flavored cigars? I haven't seen a flavored cigar in a while. Mm. I think we no, Of course, I, I, I'm only going to lounges and cigar shops that sell, you know, the, their starting price is $15 a stick. Sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not, they, the places I've gone to don't sell acid. They don't sell, yep. you know, other things. So it could just be that I haven't seen it, but I do know um, that in California, uh, all flavorings are are no no. Yeah, mm. see, I don't think it's illegal around the state. I think individual municipalities have banned okay. flavored tobacco, and it's flavored tobacco. Like, like, it, like in California, they said no more menthol cigarettes can be sold. Oh, that's interesting. They and, were, I think they were talking about that in Rhode Island. And so these great entrepreneurs came up with this little tiny device, like the size of a, a lighter that has the little uh, menthol balls and you stick it on the end of your cigarette and it pushes the menthol ball into the filter. And so you, you get it right back. You, then you just squeeze the ball and you have your menthol mm. cigarette. Huh. I love how technology like solves that problem <laughs> exactly <laughs> for people. Hacking the laws, baby. Hacking the laws. In uh, the answer in Massachusetts, absolutely positively not. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely uh, no, no flavored flavor tobacco. No flavored tobacco. Um, there's potential legislation with pipe. The only reason why is I consult for a pipe tobacco company mm -hmm. um, in Massachusetts. So I'm very familiar with both laws. And then obviously being on story, I'm familiar with the Rhode Island law uh, there too. But um, 
Yeah, in Rhode Island, they're still just capped and regular and then treated okay, as Okay, I thought so. Yep. It's I so still funny, see... too, because, you know, how does that, how does that affect, like, the Pappy Van Winkle cigars that you can buy? Mm, right, that, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I can tell you logistically, depending on the actual shop, most flavored cigars are in a separate humidor. So of usually yeah, usually a separate yeah, yeah. case. Now, right. if you stick them in a big, giant retail humidor, yeah, there's fine. so much in and out traffic. I mean, you would have to leave it dormant for like three months for you to mm. notice that the acids are seeping into the to the Podomos or the Padrones. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. But because of the, 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 the foot traffic, it's it's really not there. But um, yeah, it's... Um, no, no, I, I, mean, I mean from a flavored cigar perspective oh because it has a sweet you know, tip yeah how does it class how does it how, do you how is that classified mm. because it, it's an added flavor you it yeah. aged in a right. ex pappy van winkle barrel yep. for a number of months yeah that's a good point because diesel makes yeah. those, those cask cigars that are yes. cast in bourbon right. barrels what's and... the definition of that is that considered what is that considered though is that considered infused because i know people I who know. do that they'll put They'll put cigars in like a in like a Tupperware, yeah, with coffee beans. Mm -hmm. We we and let yeah. it sit there, and then yeah. it'll, it'll have a little. You can bit do of that a, with um, a coffee taste. Pete right? Johnson was telling me he used to do that with pipe tobacco. Yeah. He'd take a cigar and put it in a bag of right. pipe tobacco That's and leave right. it for yeah. a month or so. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, a, a friend of mine yesterday, I helped her do it. She has a Tupperware container, and she put a bunch of her own cigars inside the Tupperware container and put four little Dixie cups filled with uh, rum yep. and closed it up. Yep. And her idea is give it a couple of weeks and let's see what flavors we right. get. Mm. Give it a, give it six months and see what kind of flavor you get. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let it sit for a while. But yeah, I mean, is that... In is that infused? Is that different than what acid does? I don't know. I don't like acids. I don't... I've never... Like, yeah, I'm they not... don't... They don't disclose all the details of how they infuse acid. It's a mm -hmm. uh, patented, yeah, uh, you know, trade got secret, uh, actually, how they do the uh, acid infusion... I do know that they have special rooms uh, that have special woods and special infusion methods, and they put the tobacco in uh, in those rooms. Uh, I mean, I kind of think of it from everything they've what they will tell you is it's. I think it's kind of similar to you have you know your home infusers. My wife loves the home infusers. Yep. yep. I think you have a special one of those that goes in the room and, and is infusing the tobacco. Okay. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to it if they were able to patent it and make it a trade secret and all that. There's a lot more to yeah, it, but course, that's how I course. think of how they're infusing acids. And some of the acids aren't bad. Every once in a while, I might have one, but I haven't had any any flavored or infused cigars in quite some time. Yeah, well, it yeah. wouldn't be patented if it's a trade secret. Yeah, you're right. I'm confusing those terms together. Maybe it's just a trade. <laughs> maybe it's just a trade secret, and they don't actually have a patent. Because if they patented it, wouldn't the patent everyone filing, would know? The patent filing would be public. right. Yeah, exactly. It. Right. I think you're, exactly. It. Thank you for that correction, Jim. But I think it, I think is in uh, Jim's correction is I think correct. It is a trade secret. Mm -hmm. But to answer patent. Jason's question, you you can't sell acids in Massachusetts. You yeah. can't legally. Cannot. Cannot. Okay. Because it's considered "quote unquote" flavored, mm -hmm. even though it's infused, and it just shows how screwy the laws are, though, right? Yes, because they I are. looked up the Rhode Island law, and it says three cities have banned the sale of flavored tobacco, any type of product, except for menthol, mint, and wintergreen. <laughs> so they make what? these crazy exceptions, yes. right? And then any hookah bar is exempt. Wow, but yeah. that's <laughs> like how screwed up is that? Hookah tobacco is. I think kind of gross, in my opinion. Like Unicorn piss. But, uh, yeah, but I think you're, you're, you're I think with a hookah bar, you're targeting a certain um, uh, person who goes to the hookah bar, when, and that would be considered a bad thing when you target a an individual. Yeah. Does that make sense? No. Yes. I, I, yeah. Totally. Yes. Because uh, um, a uh, years ago we discussed opening like a hookah lounge when they were popular yeah and you can't serve alcohol in a hookah bar you can't uh it is a municipality like the city of warwick where oh, we gotcha, are gotcha, gotcha. has passed legislation and many others have as well that you cannot serve alcohol because hookah attracts a younger crowd and there was too yeah. much underage drinking uh -oh. historically yep. and a lot of cities in town said no if you're a hookah bar yeah, we might give you a license for that, mm -hmm. but it can't be uh, in a same establishment that serves alcohol. So that's home rule law. That's that's local municipality Correct. law Correct. or ordinance, right? Because I know the place in Providence does hookah and cigars. What is it, Tel Aviv? 
Yeah, yeah. They do both, right? Yeah. And they serve alcohol. And so they serve maybe alcohol and, and yeah. food. Have yes. you met the and owner food. of Tel Aviv? I have not. I yeah. Have not. yeah, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> hey. Hey. No, 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 he's really. not Italian. Oh, no. he's a, no, it's a no, very no, Rhode no. Island thing. No. Yeah. He, he can, he can, you know, <laughs> if he wants to have a church there uh, and stay open past midnight or, or one or two or whatever, yeah, yeah. Hey. I'm sure he could figure a way out. Good on it. Good on it. It's craziness. Oh, and for the, those keeping track, first poor was king of Kentucky. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Very we're nice. actually, we're, on, we're we're doing beer. We're doing IPAs today. We're yeah, doing, we should uh, talk about what we're drinking and smoking. Cigar. Thank you, Jim, for that yeah, reminder. Yeah, yeah. Cigar high, City high Brewing. Low, uh, yeah, Cigar City Brewing. I'm doing the High Low India Pale Ale. Yep, and I'm doing the High Lie Spanish Cedar. Really good. And you said these guys Spanish are from Ybor, Ybor City? Yes. They're yeah. from Ybor City. Yeah, Tampa, Florida. Yep. Yeah. So Spanish cedar, yeah, it's really good. Yep. So and then it was brewery. aged in Spanish cedar. I don't. I. I. I all Spanish I'm doing, cedar all barrels. I'm doing is drinking. I haven't read anything about it. Yet. That'd be kind of interesting to uh, age a spirit or beer in a Spanish cedar barrel. I wonder if that's even is that possible. Well, well, why, not, why not? Right. It's wood. so it <laughs> says the 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 bold citrus qualities of Highlight IPA are complemented by sandalwood. And cracked pepper notes imparted by Spanish cedar. The same. Is it like the wood of the humidors. sandals of people in the cigar factory, and then they take them after a certain period <laughs> that's of time? Sandal leather. That's sandal, <laughs> sandal wood. Sandal leather gives a very special <laughs> flavor funk. to that. It's a funk. <laughs> oh, but while we're on that topic. Um, I do want to get back to the, my girlfriend wants to start smoking. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But, we totally went off the but rails. Since we're on, but since we're on infusion, um, <laughs> this article was titled Ghost Busting. And I was like, well, what, what does this have to do with cigars, uh, pipes, and, and tobacco? And I've realized recently that um, the pipes have like these very unique things to pipes. Um and what was, I was looking at like when you have a chemical burn mm -hmm. in your mouth and how long after you can smoke. Why was I looking at that? Because <laughs> something happened. I had a cut in my mouth or it burned the roof of my mouth oh. really bad or something like that. And I was like, wow. They make antibiotics for that. Yes. <laughs> this, <laughs> I forget exactly now. What was my, I, I had some, <laughs> some kind of injury or something happened in my yeah. mouth and i was like ah oh, should i really be smoking maybe i should yeah, take yeah. some time off and when i searched for it um a thing came up of what do they call it when you get a chemical it's basically a chemical burn if you smoke too much pipe tobacco in an extended period of time really? you actually get a chemical burn mm -hmm. in your mouth mm -hmm. and you have to stop smoking for a while mm -hmm. i forget what that's called there's yeah. a term for it yeah we'll yeah figure it out yeah i don't know what it's called yeah. but it does happen because... Or you continue smoking and you let it callous up. Mm, that too. All <laughs> that. Yep. You can the do that. The manly way. Um, but this is um, called ghosting, ghost busting. So <clears throat> ghosting happens when you smoke like a particular flavored or infused pipe tobacco in your pipe. And it actually, the flavor gets infused in the... Briar. Uh, briar. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, in the briar. And you just, you can't get it out of, out of the briar. Mm -hmm. Like in the article talks about like, oh, what was he doing? Uh, activated charcoal. Really? Like all these different methods to <laughs> cleanse. Mm -hmm. But wood is so, I mean, as we know, right, Jim, from a aging in barrels, wood is very porous. And once a flavor or something like that gets infused mm -hmm. in wood, like you're not, I don't yeah, think yeah, you're yeah. getting it out. Right? You right. actually. Uh, That's your pipe for that tobacco. Basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. Right, right. yeah. The um, I've I've participated in a couple cigar testing blends for Alec Bradley and Rojas Cigars. And in the pipe world, um, the uh, company that I do the the uh, e the e-commerce for, uh, he actually blends a specific pipe tobacco for your pipe tobacco club. So there's a whole like fee and peek yeah. huh. And um, so I've been involved in many, many test plans for that. Um, the two answers I have, number one is you could do the Paul approach and that's the tobacco you have for that pipe, especially if, it, if you love that tobacco and say you smoked it for like a week straight, right? And so it's really, really in the briar. Right. But there's also, I actually have a tool um, where you can grab it by the handle. It's only like two fingers, right? 
and it's got the metal bristles mm -hmm. and it goes through the pipe and you actually scrape left, right, left, right. It'll come out oh. and it'll actually clean the actual uh, sediment and all that within the briar. You can absolutely. And that'll take the flavor out? That will take the flavor yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to really work at it yeah. to but actually take the you flavor out. You don't really want to do that to your pipes either because that cake, is the, that's the right term yep. for it? The yep. cake is important for a pipe. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you you most pipe. You're sacrificing the cake. Yeah. So, yeah. so Mike, most pipe tobacco smokers should have multiple pipes. So they would probably take your approach. Okay, this is my cherry Cavendish mm -hmm. or my, mm -hmm. you know, wild blueberry or whatever, maple flavored pipe and this is what i want for either straight latakia or oriental or true what i called like tobacco tobacco the natural nah. the natural tobacco yes yes yeah, yeah, got it so nicotine stomatitis <laughs> is the the, the burning I, re I remember what it was now i bit my tongue really really bad oh, no. <laughs> like almost <laughs> like almost had to go seek medical no attention way. because wow. it would not stop bleeding like it bled for they're like oh if it bleeds for more than 45 minutes like you should probably seek medical attention. And I was going on an hour and it was still bleeding. Mm. <laughs> and I was putting the ice on it. And like finally it stopped. I'm like, it, it freaking hurt. And then I was like, wait, when I have dental work done, they tell you not to smoke. Sure. Now I have this wound right. on my tongue. I'm like, right. I don't know if I want to smoke. And I'm, so I'm searching now, like how long after you bite your tongue, can you smoke a cigar? Like I need this, <laughs> I need to know like that an answer, right? Maybe I'll average all the answers together. And it was pipe tongue. It pipe tongue. Pipe tongue uh, is what it, I kept coming across pipe tongue. Like what the hell is pipe? And finally I came across an article. It's like, yes, if you smoke too many pipes in a row yep. for like a day, yep. you get pipe tongue and it's actually a chemical burn on your tongue. Huh. And they were recommending you take a couple of days yeah, off yeah. from smoking pipes. I'm like, well, I don't have that. I did take a day or two off from smoking cigars because I just, I didn't want to get infected. Yeah. So. You know, well, there is a medical term for the burning your roof of your mouth, nicotine stomatitis. I looked it up. Yeah. Oh, and that's when the smoke burns the roof of the roof. Yeah, of the roof of the, and yeah. you know what's crazy? If I smoke one particular stick, Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for eight years. A if certain I smoke brand? One, yes, certain brand, brand. Certain kind. Certain brand, certain kind. And the cigar only came out 10 years ago, and they celebrate the 10 year anniversary. So you can kind of <laughs> guess, right? If I smoke one brand, one stick, I get that every single time I smoke. It ruins my palate. It's yeah. amazing. Really? Yes. It, it's just one brand. It's just the way that the nicotine hits the roof of my mouth or huh. the way that is. Now, the only way I can outdo that. Or avoid that, which I finally figured out. I uh, actually figured it out this year. I just avoided the stick altogether. But then it happened again. I was like, God damn it, it's the stick again. Careful, that's opened. Yep. All right. All right. So I was like, you know, Thank whatever. You. Is you. I actually used the bullet cut to avoid the right. flume of smoke, and that did the trick. Interesting. Now, so, Jim, when I bit my tongue, I was like, well, I, I need to disinfect my mouth. And I'm like, <laughs> whiskey's a great way to do that. Oh, I'm like, yeah, I'll that just drink is. a bunch. I'll just keep Use drinking a bunch perfect. Of right? It was perfect. It was great. <laughs> And all I can think about when you guys are talking about this <laughs> is the cure for for certain diseases a uh, hundred years ago was to blow smoke up your ass. It was. Yes, that was a thing. Literally? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. No. That's where that came from. <laughs> yeah. There's actually there's actually a little a little what? uh tool. diaphragm a device tool. that they would fill with smoke and then <laughs> mm -hmm. stick it up and blow it up. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine having that job? That'd be pretty oh, crazy. God. Right? <laughs> What are you? I'm an ass smoker. Hold, hold on, I got a fix. I got a fix for you. <laughs> don't don't try this at home. It yeah, is not yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, anything right. they talk about in like medieval medicine or early medicine is not something you want to try. <laughs> Can I find one of those home. on eBay? <laughs> I want to see what they look like. Can you imagine if there are lounges like that? Oh my god. It's like a hookah bar, but different. But different. <laughs> yeah. But different. You definitely want your own tip, and you don't want to yeah. confuse the tips from the, yeah. <laughs> so I was really Shit. disappointed when I learned that Paul's not going to RSA. I am not going to RSA. Uh, is a security me, conference me. that uh, happens in San Francisco every year. I am not going this year. Um, I just, well, what happened is I submitted a talk and it got rejected. And then I was like, screw you guys, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> my, my ego won't let me go. That's, I, I can't. <laughs> and I, because I got invites for the Wingtip Club, which is this really fancy cigar experience on the 10th floor 
Yeah, see, now um, I want to go. When it, now everyone started describing all the cool things that they're going to. <laughs> all my friends are describing these cool things they're going to. And I'm like, now I, I really want to go. Damn it. <laughs> Whoops. And I, I had uh, Year of the Rabbit, yep. David off. Oh, yeah. For Paul. And oh, then, uh, more reasons to listen, go. Listen, uh, he doesn't bite on that. I tried to get him yeah, to join the yeah, 300th yeah. episode of BSW with I'm the really, Year of the Rabbit, you know, and he I'm still very, didn't show up. I'm very yeah. stingy with my time recently. <laughs> it's all good. It's all and good. then uh, a 10-ounce mini bottle uh, from my Infinity Barrel. Mm. See, I, I had all these things lined up for you. Why don't but, you just you know? fly to his house, Paul, after the RSA and just have a good time? <laughs> Well, because I'm going to a conference after RSA and speaking in Baltimore. Oh yeah, see, hooray for that conference! I would say they should have hired, they should have had you speak. Uh, Jeff Mann right. and I, Jeff Mann and I, are already planning our cigar adventures nice. uh, for next weekend nice. uh, in Baltimore. Very cool, uh, which will be fun. Um, but uh, yeah, what are the spots in Baltimore? Have you have you eyeballed them yet? I don't. Know. I know so many people live in Baltimore. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah they just go with them. Yeah, yeah. we'll just go That's with cool. them. So all right, when you go to Baltimore, you have to go past my first ship I was on. Mm. Mm. It's at, at the. It's a museum in Baltimore Harbor. Oh, nice! Is that the one you post about all the time? Yeah, nice. That's cool. Is that the one that you send something to yeah, the? Yeah, yeah. To no, the that's leader? a different one. Oh, okay. No, that that's a. Uh, uh, um, I randomly send donations to uh, Coast Guard and Navy ships that are going mm -hmm. underway yep. uh, for extended periods. To help the morale fund out. That's awesome. Anywhere from five to ten grand worth of stuff. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. Those are yeah, those are active ships that you're sending to. Correct. But but yeah, your Correct. your first ship is now a museum. Correct. Um oh also Gotti's having the old farts party at RSA. And there was much debate as to like who qualifies for that. <laughs> What's the criteria yeah. for old fart? <laughs> well, also, I'm like, God, I, uh, I, I, I can't make it, assuming that I, I would qualify. I'm like, but also, your party starts at 8.30, and that's like really close to my bedtime. So <laughs> I guess in that sense, I do qualify. <laughs> oh, my God, that's great. Did you, um, did you see the article about um, how many cigar imports happened over the course of 2022? Yep, it Amazing. rose again. Amazing. It rose again. Amazing. In a year that we didn't think it was going to rise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hit 400 and 464 million. Mm -hmm. In that, but that's comparison to the previous year? Yes. Comparison to the okay. previous year, which was a record year. 2021 was a record year. In 2020, a record year compared to 2020? Or record His, year? History. In history. It's history. It's going up regardless oh, of COVID. Right. Because oh, yep. that, you yep. know where yep. I'm going yep. with that. Because yeah, COVID, yep. The, yep. you couldn't get a container ship to actually ship cigars. Yep. So that hurt a lot. But 2021 was a record year for all cigar imports. Yep. yep. And we beat which, it by 2.3% in 2022. The 42 shops in Rhode Island, I think, contributed to pushing oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I was going there too. Right? Right? So I was like, thank you, Rhode Island. Million? That's right. What's that, Jim? Total import. Of cigars, is that the four hundred twenty-four million dollars or four hundred twenty-four? No million cigars. Four hundred sixty-four point five million premium cigars in sticks. twenty twenty-two sticks. That doesn't seem like a lot, you know. That it's not because it, it, it it's really not, Jim. But you know, less than two percent of the U.S. population smokes, smokes premium cigars. cigars. Yeah, I'm curious so, to see where the yeah. the numbers are on the cigar smokers. Uh, the percentage of U.S. population that smokes uh -huh. cigars. I've, over the years, read several articles and studies on this, and I've seen it range anywhere from 1% to 5%. Of, me, of As low as yep. 1, of the as high as 5, and everywhere in between. Yep. Um, so I, if you average those out, right, let, let's just say 25 But, sure. like, I'd like to see a, a, an accurate study of, like, mm -hmm. current today. Yep. What yeah, is yeah. the because obviously that percentage changes and if we're importing more cigars you would also think the percentage of cigar smokers has gone up and if you what if you also looked at how many new lounges are opening mm -hmm. we certainly mm -hmm. see that here in this state yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. I wonder if that that's got to be a thing across the country uh, that's right. be another <clears throat> interesting stat to sure, measure sure. as well yeah I mean they did include stats in here where it says um, the strongest import was Nicaragua of course yep two hundred fifty point eight million cigars. Mm -hmm. Dominican Republic was second, interesting, with 128.9 million, and then Honduras yep. with 83 million. Right. Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy. I, I've spoke about this since January 2nd, 2017, throughout this whole show, where Nicaraguan 
you know, a couple of years ago, you wouldn't be able to say that. Like, mm -hmm. like it was always Dominican, Dominican. Republic, Dominican yeah. Republic. And I yep, said, yep, there's yep. a Nicaraguan boom. That's why they're coming out with these complex Connecticut's where you have a, a, a Nicaraguan binder and filler mm -hmm. with a Connecticut wrapper. Nicaragua is now officially the king of yep. how many? How many? Pulse. I wonder how many cigars are produced uh, domestically. Yeah. Right. Oh, th there's a there's a couple. There's probably. I mean, regardless of the, the roller, you mean from from like a bigger company, like a like yeah, a, like if, a J C Newman has one now. The, the cigars made here, grown here, rolled here that don't have to be imported. Oh, that that yeah, that, yeah there's not there's there's not, not that many. It, I, it's like Pennsylvania and Florida. Yeah, right? like under ten, guaranteed. Connecticut now. Connecticut mostly exports though. Now, Right, but now Potagus, I don't know if anybody posted this. I, I didn't review the articles, but um, Potagus is doing an American rolled here version, mm -hmm. but they've dragged the tobacco from over there to put it yeah, over so here. Cohiba right. does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody does that. I mean, Co Cohiba came out with the Cohiba Miami, you know, to pay homage to, the, to there. And it's amazing because then people are like, well, I really think they should roll more cigars in America. And I'm like, yeah, if they roll cigars in America, we're not going to be paying $12 a stick or. 14 california price we're going to be spending 25 dollars a stick just because of labor mm -hmm. you know what i mean so well, wait yeah. so in, so what you're really saying is in california i'll be paying 50 dollars a stick. exactly <laughs> yeah, exactly right. yep right. yep now, uh, a 22 dollar davidoff here is a 42 dollar davidoff at rsa yeah easy easy like i remember that i remember i was like where am I? Oh yeah, I'm in California. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now they did say that obviously Cuban cigars are not counted in this, of course, because they're illegal mm -hmm. and they're not accounting for it. So that number is greater, but of course it is. Yep, yep. But I, I'd be yeah, interested how, in. You can't count I'd that. I'd be interested in seeing. <laughs> no one would admit to importing exactly. Cuban cigars. That's illegal. Point. That's Even though that they're counting sticks, I'd be interested to find out like what the cadence of the buyer is. Like, are we counting? Like, you know, when you say 5%, is that someone who smokes a cigar yes. a week? Yes. Is that, is that someone like us who smokes a cigar or more a day? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'd be interested to, 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 to see those numbers. Right. It'd be su super interesting. Because I bet you, if you go um, more than five sticks a week, say you smoke one a day for five days and let your palate rest, which, you know, we're obviously at this table more than that a week for sure. <laughs> But, like, I bet you that number is probably closer to 4%. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, but speaking of that, so how do we get more people to smoke cigars? Yeah, right. Show I, them a good time. Because I, I think, but what? I think if you talk about um, the kind of atypical female smoker, right? Your first kind of thought is gravitate towards a flavored or infused cigar, mm -hmm. which I. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on. I think it, it greatly depends on the on the person. Yes, absolutely. it's knowing your audience, right? Yes, yep. absolutely know your audience. I mean, there are so many people that were kind kind of a cigar, like I'll, friends who would smoke an occasional cigar. Yes, and then all of a sudden you you start connecting with them and building relationships with them, and having the conversations around in depth about the cigars, right? And, and, and about how they're made and what kind of tobaccos and you start really getting them into the community and engaging in the community, you start really bringing them into deeper into the enjoyment of being in that cigar family, right? I mean, in, mm -hmm. in all honesty, I mean, perfect example, my, my, my buddy Frank, who's out there right now, who came today, you know, I, you know, we've smoked a couple cigars in the past, but now, now he's starting to talk about, hey, I really like Tatuaje. I yeah. really like, you know what I mean? And it's, it, it's pretty cool to start getting people engaged and teaching them about the craft. Right. But they also have to listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember receptive. I was sure. coming, sure. <laughs> coming out of work here one day. <laughs> and it was two people getting in the car <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear the, it was the passenger car door open. They hadn't left the parking spot yet. Passenger car door is open. And I hear vomiting, <laughs> just <laughs> vomiting. And I look oh. over and it's just like vomiting, spewing all over the parking lot. And I'm like, I'm out of here. And I'm like, I know exactly what happened. His friend came with him to the cigar lounge. And his yep. friend was like, oh, I want to get into smoking cigars. Like, it sounds fun. And his friend probably told him, like, dude, like, you should probably eat, eat something before yep. you have yep. a cigar. Yep. If you don't smoke a lot of cigars. And you should probably smoke something light. It's probably like, ah, 
Yeah, whatever. Well, whatever. Like, give me the, give me that tatouage, <laughs> hey, you know, with the Nicaraguan <laughs> tobacco in it, and it's not going to end up good. No, mm -hmm. I, I work in a retail cigar place, and you what's know, your, what's your puking uh, average? <laughs> well, well, no, <laughs> what's the ratio? no, it, it, it's kind of funny because like someone always comes in who's new. I work on a mm -hmm. Saturday night, right? I work one Saturday a month over there, and uh, you know, it, it, and it's it's. Uh, you know, it's in Newport, Rhode Island, so it's a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of people in the summer time. Baby, people. Are, well, I used to, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes when I was smaller, but I stopped smoking cigarettes. So, what do you think I should get? I'm like, well, I think you should stop light. You should do this. And by the way, always start light. But I also tell them, in a little bit of education, you know, your your methodology for yes. smoking cigarettes totally different, and your cadence right. needs to be completely different. Yeah. It's a it's a different animal. And then I usually start them small. And then in regards to the female, uh, I've had experience where this guy comes in. He's from Spain. Goes to Newport. He hangs out there all summer. So I'm in my year two. So I've met him over the two summers. And, um, you know, we, we were talking. And he comes in. He speaks broken English. But he was ordering, asking me about what I had per roller. So he's like, do you have any Lito Gomez? Do you have any uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo? You have a drone, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you know. And so I knew I understood it. So I was like, okay, sure. Helped him out. And his wife would always do flavored, flavored, flavors. And mm -hmm. she goes, and she was a Spanish lady. They're from Miami. And she goes, she goes, you know, Newport's, my husband likes this place. Newport's not like Miami. I says, sweetie, our best day will never beat Miami. Yeah. I love Miami. <laughs> so I opened up to her. Point of the story is she's like, I've always smoked flavored. I want to, my husband wants me to try a regular cigar. He says, I got the perfect cigar for you, right? I, 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 op I opened the wrapper, scanned it in the tab. I cut it for her. I lit it for her. She asked the bartender for the, um, she was drinking old fashioned, mm -hmm. right? With her husband. She asked the bartender for the, the uh, cherry stick so she could do like a, the kind of like, I don't say roach clip or whatever, right? To nub it. She mm. nubbed this thing down and she goes, thank you very much. I turned her on to Altero Fluente short story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. female short, you know, you, you don't want to overwhelm her with like a Toro or yeah. a Churchill. But I think and, in general, and, and she loves it. I, I get that from new cigar smokers. Mm. They don't want a large cigar. Right. Like it's Agreed. just. Agreed. Agreed. It's intimidating. It's, they don't want to sit there for that for that long. Yep. Like they have this kind of stigma where they're like, they're like, how do you smoke a cigar? Like it is, right, you know, right, two right, three right. hours in. Yep. Yeah, somebody's like, how can you spend like two hours in a cigar lounge? I'm like, dude, I'm in a cigar lounge from like nine in the morning till till five. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm doing work, but you know, and and quite frankly, I'll probably go through like three cigars. Yeah. I mean, I, that uh, being uh, said, there is one cigar in in my humidor here. It is absolutely massive, and I just I can't bring myself to smoke it. Oh, it's, the Asylum. It's like nine. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. this is not. It's no? one from Holtz. Oh, okay. It's nine and a half by like 70. That's like the Woody. <laughs> Isn't the Woody like a huge? Yeah, it looks, it is. There, there, are, there have been variations on this, but this yeah. one comes from Holtz, and it's like one of their house brands, and it's in this giant coffin, and yep. it looks like... Remember when you used to go to the Paw Sox game here in Pawtucket, Rhode Island? Bats. And you get the little bat? <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's like a miniature baseball bat, Jim. Like you can literally like hold it like wow. a miniature baseball bat. bat. And I just, you have I to can't, do like intermission breaks every hour? Yeah, like I can't bring well, myself to contests. smoke it too. Because like, I'd be so committed to doesn't, that. Doesn't shenanigans up in New right. Hampshire have a contest on smoking either the Asylum or the Woody or something like that? They do contests. LFD also made a really long cigar. It wasn't as uh, thick a ring gauge, mm -hmm. but it was nine plus yeah and i remember i lit it up and remember we were taking pictures of me smoking it <laughs> and i'm like oh, i gotta go next door like i gotta i gotta show todd and i walked out the door and before i could open the door the end of the cigar hit, hit the, the door, door. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a movie oh my god that's so funny that's so funny that's when you know that it's just too big it's, yeah, just, right, it's, right. it's, it's a novelty yeah eric uh, eric on youtube says uh my wife Will have an occasional cigar with me. She likes the Blanco Primos Classic Maduro, mm -hmm. and it's not infused. Mm. You know what nice. I mean? So I mean, there again, uh, again. So how do we answer the question? How do you get your girlfriend or significant other, or to, anybody? I mean, to, anybody to rationalize? Yeah, like, some of the, but like, some of the infused stuff. Like my wife has uh, smoked some cigars with me over the years. Not recently, but she's 
I mean, to her credit, she's tried it. Sometimes they give, we give her a flavored cigar, and she's like, that's awful. Right. Yeah. And it was a nicer flavored cigar. She's like, I, I don't like right. that. Right. And then I'd give her a different flavored cigar that maybe wasn't even uh, as expensive. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I like that one better. So, right. like, everyone's taste is... You have to is, know your audience. Yeah, and, everyone's and, taste is yeah. different. And for us who are experienced, it's about being a good steward of mm-hmm. the craft and right. being a good steward of right and and it, this, I also this, don't, is, this I mean, isn't an opportunity to haze people right this is an opportunity to teach people and be a good steward of the craft but jim i, I don't know if you've experienced this i know you like uh david off cigars a lot and so do i but i tend not to give those to new cigar smokers because if they get tired and they they pitch it before mm. it's halfway done, like I just I I cry oh I cry Absolutely. a little inside. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why I don't give away padrones and yeah. you know like it, absolutely it's the truth. Has that happened to you, Jim? Truth. Have you given someone like you know like a thirty dollar David off and they don't finish it and you're like, ah. Oh. Yes, actually mm. that that actually happened two weeks ago, uh, for uh, the same exact cigar I'm smoking right now, the yeah, limited edition 2022. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I handed out three of them to three of my friends who had never smoked before. One lit it, took two puffs, and went, "No, not for me." Oh God! Yeah, I, I do you know it's how like, many. Uh, ow! Yes, ow. totally. <laughs> how, good, how good of a friend though? And you're like, "I'll, I'll just take that." I'll <laughs> yeah, try. Right, I'm gonna right, finish right. it. Well, I did. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to say it, but I, I, I said, "Your germs are fine with me." Yeah, Give right. it back. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm working tomorrow at the cigar lounge, and I will throw away. At least four fifty dollar oh Davidoff God. cigars because what happens is you know we have the Navy War College next yes. door and stuff like that. So a guy will come in who's like a diehard and we know him, blah blah, blah. and then he brings in a Navy friend and he's like, you know, I'll have what he's having. I'm like, okay, would you like a recommendation? First of all, it's half the price where I'm going to recommend you. Are you mm. sure about and that? And I think of that. No, no, no. I want what he's having. Okay, sure. I don't argue. That's cool. You know, he he wasn't up to being educated or receptive to that. And 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 like he'll smoke like two inches of it, and like I'll th- I'll throw them away. Ugh. Matter of fact, if I throw any away, I will post them on Facebook and tag you in it. <laughs> like I'll be like, I'm throwing this out. I'm throwing oh, it, dude. It, it's no. so crazy. It's dude. not, but it's not so much the price for me, um, as no, much as it is yeah. if, if I give someone something that can't be or is difficult to recreate. Exactly. If it's a rare or limited mm-hmm. cigar, you're never going to see Correct. again. Or if it's a, I've got some Cuban cigars that are. 10 plus years of age. I don't have a lot of them left in my humidor, but I have some yeah. like those should be But enjoyed. on the same token, that's part of our responsibility to be good stewards. Yes. Is not to put something like that in front of someone. Not even, mm. yeah. Don't even make it an option. Yep. I don't want right? to put that pressure on anyone exactly. either. Exactly. Yeah, because egos are going to take over. Gonna be like, Hell yeah, I want yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And nah. I will tell you, uh, I've experienced with ladies when I uh, do my cigar service. And I always say, like, they always go, you know, I always have a flavored, but I don't know about that. I said, listen, if you want to get rowdy and explore, let's go through a journey. Especially the ones I know who come in at the same cadence. And then, you know, you get them into some Connecticut and some lighter stuff and get them going for that natural tobacco flavor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think once they can have that paired with what they're drinking, but also... It does depend, and if you're in a lounge, and it depends on like what you're drinking, right? They're gonna have mm-hmm. a chocolate martini, you know what I mean? I'm like, listen, if you're gonna have this red wine, like you are gonna be addicted to this <laughs> cigar, like with the red wine, you know? Chocolate martini, I mean, I like a martini with a cigar, but like if it's that sweet, I like the martini sitting by itself, and I'll smoke the cigar after the martini, you know what I mean? But you know, when you're coming there, and and you you just gotta know your audience, mm-hmm. and That's then. It. But we still didn't answer. How do you convince them? I don't think it's convincing. I think it's taking people on a journey. Mm. Okay. Honestly, it's it's not it's not like you can sit down with someone and be like, I'm going to turn you into a cigar smoker no. today. It's someone showing interest and then helping educate them and taking them on a journey. They need to be willing to go down that journey. Oh, well, speaking of journeys, take a quick segue. What did you guys think of the, have you guys had this Padron 1964 uh, pyramid? Not, is what I not gave yet. You guys. I, I, so, no, I'm still on the the... 2.0. Oh, you haven't lit that one up? No, yet. no, no. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm about to. I'm about to. So I should have followed we're, your methodology first. I thought we were. On this. We got the order messed up. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. What do you think of the new pork tenderloin, by the way? Me? Yeah. It, there's completely no leather component yep. that was predominant in, in the, the original, original the pork tenderloin. Yep. yep. I think that would come with a little bit of age mm-hmm. there too, but yep. you have to smoke this without thinking of. The original, the original pork tenderloin. The OG. It's a, so if you do that, 
It's great on the retro. Mm -hmm. White pepper. Yep. Pete Johnson does a wonderful job. The Taluxo series in itself is is amazing. Yep. So like I don't want to diminish the brand, but it's not a pork tenderloin, and it shouldn't be marketed out as a pork yeah, tenderloin. Yeah. The, the the difference <laughs> is the um the San Andreas wrapper. Yeah. That's the difference in the cigar yeah. right now, right? Yeah. I'm getting more of a drier. Yeah, me too. Drier. Yep. Um, great tobacco component, mm -hmm. like as far as tobacco flavor, white pepper, Nico 101, super cool, great stick, mm -hmm. but I love- not the OG. Like, I had that umami flavor on, on my palate every time I smoked a uh, pork tenderloin. I get that from the Japanese barbecue sauce I bought. Oh, the umami sauce? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm nice. saying, right? You know when you're like, yeah. God yeah. damn, that's a full, full, full disclosure, full disclosure. Yep. I pre-ordered these. I got them less than two weeks ago. And they've been in my humidor for maybe two weeks, not even. And, yeah, right? Jason, so, Jason maintains the most impeccable humidor. I, I think out of all of us. Oh, yeah. He's got yeah. stopwatches, Jim. Uh, uh, <laughs> as far as the agent on each of them, and he programs them, and he's got an app I, for, yeah, uh, for yeah, skewing yeah. And I used, to, I used to do all that, and then, I don't know, I got, I got lazy. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. lazy, and now I'm just like, oh, it's, it's yelling at me to add water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, noticed that when I came in here for cigars. BSW, I'm like, the oh. humidor's at 58. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't stress about it now. I think it's kind of the similar, like, when you get an electric car, at first you're paranoid that you're going to run out of, out of battery. Yeah. And then when you get to, like, our, my friend Kevin Finisterre, you guys probably know, he's like, you get over that over time. Man, he's like, I've had down to 1%. It's fine. Now yeah. I'm like, oh, it's at 60. I'm like... At sixty, it's not gonna it's not gonna ruin the cigars. It's fine. <laughs> What's more dangerous is if it gets higher in, yeah, oh yeah, in humidity. Totally, totally. So, Jim, yep. you have you had a common question. So, introducing people to cigars, I think it's a lot harder than it sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, if, mm -hmm. especially if they've never smoked at all, they don't like the smell of smoke. You know, um, there's a certain kind of person that that could be attracted to it mm -hmm. just from a social aspect. Yes, but um, it, it's similar to uh, introducing people to whiskey and bourbon mm -hmm. who, yes. you know, they, they've been a, a vodka or tequila drinker their whole life. And uh, they're very afraid of of brown juices. Mm. <laughs> the only difference is, you know, if I whip out the two thousand dollar bottle of Happy 23 and I can pour just a tiny bit. Yes. And they can decide whether or not they like it. Right. Yeah. And I'm not throwing it away. But handing them a, you know, you're the rabbit, $110 a stick, mm -hmm. and they get partway through and they go, oh, that's horrible. I hate that. Um, you know, that, that's a big that's disappointment tough. right there. And you know, what's, you know yeah. what's funny, though? What's funny what you say, Jim, is um, my wife has recently become more and more of a bourbon drinker, and she does a similar kind of thing. Like, I'll hand her a bourbon that I really like that's maybe a little more higher end, and she'll be like, oh, I don't like that. I'm like, really? That's Angel's Envy. Like, you, you don't like that and then i'll hand her something you know completely different that's yep, maybe a yep. little less expensive mm -hmm. than angels i mean she's like oh i like i like that one so i'm trying to find like where her palate her is landing yeah. uh for bourbon and, and keep that you know in in stock for her so my, my wife enjoys uh, woodford reserve mm -hmm. double oak mm -hmm. me it's okay it's an okay yeah. spirit you know nothing wrong with it but she really likes it because yeah. it is a, a little bit on the sweeter side, has a little tiny bit of a of a spice to it. Yep. Um, and then she always eats a piece of chocolate with it. Oh mm. wow! Well. Jim, quick seg, quick question. Hundred, not to hyper focus on the price. Hundred and ten dollars a stick for a year of the rabbit That's over there. Exactly what I did as soon as he said that. Hundred, <laughs> is that is that is like that truth? Is that truth? Uh, ish. Well, if uh, <laughs> it, it's an average price. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's seventy five here. So just to give you an idea, <laughs> and the only reason why is because I, I I actually had a client who owns a restaurant who wanted three boxes of them. Wow. And I'm like, wow. okay, I'm going to make some calls, but this is going to cost you, you know, some money. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem, Joe. I was like, okay. And they were 75 a piece, no discount. Yeah. So they were 75 yeah. a piece, yeah, and they're $110. And, 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 now, and, and that's I found all taxation. And I, and right I found them, I found them on, a, <laughs> on a deal. Regency had mm -hmm. a deal where there were, there were 50 a piece. Yeah. Yep. And then they sold them at half price if you came in and bought a drink. And sure. A yeah. Stick, yeah. Nice. And yeah, yeah. we paid 25 each. Yep. So yeah. there was that's I, want, I want I just want to go back to bourbon for a moment because um, my wife does this other thing recently. I don't know if you guys have also like quick segue seen some of the like TikToks and short videos where uh, it's about the husband and the wife and the husband's like, 
anytime I put something down, my wife moves it and puts it away. Mm -hmm. I think we, mm -hmm. a lot of us experience yep. that. And so my wife is now doing this with bourbon. I have two decanters on the bar and they have the Steve's, yep, Steve's, 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 Steve's yep. sorry, Steve's in them, right? And I'll leave open bottles of bourbon on the bar and then uh, I'll wake up the next morning and the bottles are gone and the decanters are full. <laughs> and I'm like, First, like, which one did you put yep. in which? Like, yep. I don't care that you did <laughs> that. I'm not complaining. Like, love you. Like, but I'm like, which? I think that you was put so that. sweet of you. But what did you I put? I want to get into a put? fight, but and, she, <laughs> and she'll just kind of laugh and she'll like look up and think and she's like, oh, I put that one in that one and I'm like, that's that's cool. But she recently <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> and I'll I'll know by like so I had uh, a Russell's Reserve single barrel um, with uh, bourbon mm. with the red label. Are you familiar with that one, Jim? It's like I think yeah. I sent you a, might have sent you a picture of it. Sixty seven dollars a bottle, uh, and it had a seventeen ninety two that had less in it. So I knew by volume sure. which one she had done, and I was like, "Babe, good job with the Russells," because I thought that was a little sharp, uh, in my opinion, and I thought decanting it with the stave was the way to go. And she just looked at me like, "What did you just say?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "No, you did great." Russell's Reserve. You need to try the Russell's Reserve. Single Rick House. Mm. Okay. It is like candy. Mm. Single. Single Rick House. All right. Single Rick House. Very nice. I'm going to look. I'm and that's look one of the it. bottles I have in my locker at the lounge. I just shared it again last night. It's phenomenal. I, I think that's in my top three. Wow. Is that the green bottle? Green label. Yeah. Green label. And it's about the same price. It's 112.4. Oh, this is Russell Reserve Single Rick House Nelson is sixty-seven dollars and thirty cents. This is just some random online site, though. Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. Mm. Interesting. All I'll right. have to look for it the same because now I've been since the last time you came on the show, Jim. And when I go to a new liquor store, now I go right to the bourbon section and I'm like, <laughs> like what haven't I tried? Like what's right. what, what looks what <laughs> looks good? And I send Jim a picture. I'm like, how did I do? I forget the last one I sent you. What that was? That one was good too, though. What was that? I it don't remember. It began with a P. It began with a P. What was it? Not Penel don't say Penelope. Penelope, is it? It was Penelope, wasn't it? Penelope. Penelope. Yeah. It was uh, one of the Penelope's, uh, a single barrel. Yeah. I thought that one was pretty I good, know. too. I know. Is is Penelope good? I haven't tried Penelope at all. Is it is it all right? It's it's pretty good. Yeah? You know, it, it, it's not in my top 20, but it's yep. pretty good. All right. At some point, I want you to post your yeah, top wait, 20. Yeah, wait, hold on. You got a top 20? Yeah, that, right. Exactly. <laughs> at some point, can you I post actually, your top 20? I actually have a... <laughs> I have a, a a top 100 list of bourbon and a top 100 list of whiskey. American where where whiskey. do you make that public? <laughs> <laughs> or at least private for us? Can you post it in in Slack for us? Is that is that on like <laughs> is that on threathunter.io? Yeah, yeah, like right. where do I go? <laughs> threathunter.io <laughs> slash bourbon. <laughs> no dot ai. Oh, it's dot ai. AI. Okay. Okay. Slash whiskey. Threathunter. <laughs> Do you four oh four? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you a AI. It's all about cybersecurity stuff, Jim. Where's the bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> I, did I tell you about what my daughter did? This was two years ago, or actually more. During COVID, she went through and and took an inventory, uh, unbeknownst to me, of all the open bottles, mm -hmm. and then went and found all the retail prices of all those said bottles. Hope she didn't speak to and your then, wife. <laughs> and then and then blackmailed me. Oh Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell mom. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Unbelievable. So um one of the No, so wait, so yeah. so Jim, do you have a list that you share publicly? <laughs> I've I'm never serious. shared it publicly. Or but privately. I'm, I'm no, share it privately. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you share it with Stogie Geeks, we'll be happy. But I think you should brand like your your company with, with this list. Cause like I would totally keep it on my phone or print it out. So when I go to the every liquor store. Every time I go to a liquor store, every time I, I look go to at liquor your store. top one hundred. Yes. I, I really I truly would. I yeah. really, really would. Definitely. I go to Whiskey I, Advocate I'd have to be careful and I look though, at their top of this list because there there is a guy named Jim Murray. Mm-hmm. 
who actually comes out with this book once a year. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who selects whiskey of the year, bourbon of the year, scotch of the year, et cetera. Yep. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I think you I think you should share it because I absolutely do the same. But what I do is I'll go to Whiskey Advocate and I'll look at their top and I'll walk through the I'll walk through the whiskey <laughs> aisles looking and I'm like, ooh, all right, let me grab that. And Don't do that. that. It could be sponsorship revenue. I, I know that's at what least I'm afraid Jim's, of. At least that's Jim's what I'm afraid is, of. That's like what I'm saying. What I, would I, like. use, <laughs> I would use your list over that any day of the week because you're right. It could be sponsorships. Mm. That are it's interesting though, the there choice. is a with cigars and whiskey both, right? There's a uh, you got to consult the expert. Yeah. Because I, I yeah. belong to one of those online uh, whiskey membership things. Yep. And so this, I want to give them like a free plug on the show. But mm -hmm. so you subscribe, it's like $200 a year. And then you can go on, uh, I think at least monthly. Did they send you the little samples? And they'll give you a sample. Gotcha. Yep. 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 But they also have a, sh a store component mm -hmm. where you can buy all kinds of like regular and rare uh, bourbon, scotch, you know, whiskey, all that stuff. Uh, and their prices like really fluctuate. So I was showing it to my friend Mark. And I'm like, oh, I can buy this. He's like, dude, don't, that's like double what you should be really? paying. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jim, I'll also consult with you because I want to place an order. Yes. Let's figure out how stuff. to get that list to us. You know, dur during COVID, I started, we did it for almost a year and a half. Um, uh, I randomly chose people that signed up. Uh, it was a free thing, and I sent them. It was twenty-five people per month. Um, I sent them five samples and a couple little presents. Nothing company-related. It was purely about whiskey. And then we did Zoom tastings yeah. once a month. Mm. That's awesome. That's, That's cool. super cool. All right, I'm jumping in on the Patron. Nice. You have a nice article there pulled up on the computer. Mm. Why don't you bring that up? That's a good, so, so I, good I, point. I, I brought it up because of, we see this a lot in the technology industry. We see it a lot in cybersecurity industry, the consolidation of companies, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And the article that I pulled up, it was about Alec Bradley and STG. And we know that STG has been on a mission to take over the world. They bought, they bought Room 101. Yes. And now Alec Bradley. And they're bringing on, like they, they brought Matt Booth on as the Room 101 like marketing lead I thought or something, that was, something like that. They just, did reason, the same, they just did the same thing with the Suns from Alec Bradley. I thought that was STG. I thought that was oh, Scandinavian, Scandinavian Tobacco, tobacco Group. Company. No. Yep. That's not who owns Davidoff, right? No. No. Nope. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought Room 101 went to Davidoff, but that was Camacho that went to Davidoff. Yeah. Yes. Christian yes. sold yeah, mm. to, to that to yes. uh, Davidoff. So, but what they're doing is they're actually bringing on folks from the company they're acquiring. Mm-hmm. To, to become their marketing people and their sales people and having leadership roles within the organization under the brand to be able to, to continue to run the brand. Because, I mean, we know Matt Booth has a brand, right? I mean, yeah. a, a lot of Room 101 is, is, is Matt Booth. It's there because of his brand and what he's created. Same thing with Alec Bradley. So they brought on the sons, Alec and Bradley Rubin, to be their marketing leads for that line. You know, and we're, right, we're seeing a ton of consolidation in the in the cigar market. STG bought uh, Cohiba, La Gloria, Macanudo. The U.S. brands, that? though. It's the, the U.S. US brands. But who owned that? Was it? It wasn't General. What was the other one? It was um, General. Is the other set of Cuban brands? I've been wanting to unpack this on the show for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But is consolidation a good thing? That's when I, That's why I wanted to bring this con conversation up. You know, I mean, yet to yet to be determined, relating right? it back to cybersecurity mm -hmm. consolidation. From from my perspective, is you know, and I'm going to sound mean, is one less competitor I have to deal with. When right. IBM goes and buys a uh -huh. competitor of mine, I know that that competitor is taken off the board. You know, yep. because sooner or later, uh, IBM is either going to get disinterested in that new organization mm -hmm. or it gets melded in to the Borg that is IBM. Likewise, when right. Google buys another cybersecurity firm, mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, that company disappears and is taken off the board. And when it comes to products like whiskeys uh, or cigars, I think that's actually doing a disservice in, in a way to the general consumer because now all of those products from that one main owner mm -hmm. are all going to be very similar. They're going to come out sooner or later using the same juice just under different labels. And that's the fear that I have, right? Mm -hmm. The fear that I have is that the quality of what we're used to for these individual right. cigar brands diminishes. 
But the strategy that they're using is continuing to use the people who led the company originally. Now, whether or not they stick around for the long term is another question, right? Right. But they're right. keeping the 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 founders of these companies around. I'm hoping well, they to, continue, have, to continue I mean, the they, quality. I don't know. Is it I mean, just for they, the brand? They, they bought an <laughs> asset, right? They don't right. want to diminish the asset right away, right? That's they need it. to keep that asset yep. going. Yep. But for how long? That's and the then question. and then there's going to be the realization from the large corporate Borg itself going, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? We really don't need those people anymore. Yep. We have our own sales team. We have our own marketing team. Mm -hmm. like, you know, give it two years and and you'll start to see those people exit. Right. But but it allowed them to to ensure that that asset isn't undervalued right away or or retailers take it off the shelf and right away. And to keep away. the promoters of the brand around, us consumers right. who are promoters right. of the brand, to keep us around buying and, and evangelizing the brand. So you, you identify with a, a, a market brand in conjunction with a personal brand mm -hmm. is what is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's definitely a Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So, so the question is, you know, this has all been happening over the course of the last couple of years that we're seeing this huge consolidation. I can't wait to talk about this five years from now and say what happened to these brands. Where is Room 101 today? Where is Alec Bradley today? Were they able right. to keep that quality up? Were they able to keep the promoters of that brand around and the evangelists of the brand around? Or did it all get watered down? Okay. I have a ton to say about this. Do it. For sure. Um, first of all, uh, record-wise, on the record, Drew Estate Cigars went through this uh, about three years off the top of my head. I lost a couple of years with, with having a two-year-old, five-year-old in COVID, <laughs> right? So it could be like four years. So send all your hate email to paul at stogegeeks.com, <laughs> right? Um, they were, they were purchased that. by Drew, uh, Swedish, Swedish, Swedish Match? Three, no, no. No, well, no Sw uh, Swedish Sweets. I, I think it was three, three, three or four years ago, right? So Drew, Drew Estate did this. And, you know, Jonathan Drew, phenomenal company, started you know yeah they have some 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 infused stuff but they also have some really good sticks you also got to realize this unlike cyber some cyber security companies that get acquired right jason yep. the now these companies that get acquired have um market marketing dollars and marketing powers mm -hmm. that they haven't had those resources sure right so they can do some super cool stuff also, with Drew, post acquisition of when Swiss Sweets took them over, like they've created some super awesome marketing campaign, especially with the Drew Freestyle, where they do a uh, online event. Now this all came from COVID, but they re they send out a quote unquote mystery stick, and no one knows what it is. Mm -hmm. And anybody who purchased this package and it comes with some swag and all that stuff, and then they reveal what it was. They've done so many cool brands since then with that methodology. Mm -hmm. So in the cigar field, that has proven to be very, very successful. You also got to remember, when they acquired Matt Booth, it was just Matt Booth. Mm -hmm. When they acquired Alec Bradley, they acquired Alan Rubin, founder yep. of yep. Alec Bradley. Yep. But then they also acquired the resources of Alec and Bradley, his two children, mm -hmm. which is how the name came out above from his cigar company, right? And they've only come out with four sticks pre-acquisition. Mm -hmm. One of them was a collaboration with E.P. Carrillo, and then um, they've come out with some other sticks on, under there too. So I think it's going to give them five years from now. Yep. I think the quality is not going to be as washed out as we think it is. Okay. I think the creativity of what's to come is super cool. And what I like about when they're acquiring these brands, they also took with them a gentleman by the name of John Lipson, who was on this show here too. He was the director of marketing for Alec Bradley. I've had the opportunity to interview him. I think it was 2018. And, you know, again, now they'll be able to take that small business survivor mentality with a bigger company and have better resources to create some super cool synergy and have some really cool things coming down the yeah. pipe. I mean, like with any company, though, it's what you do with that, mm -hmm. what, what with you the do acquired, with the resources, right? Well, and it's what you do with that acquired brand. That's right. You acquire that company and you're planning to grow it and grow their yep. brand and, yep. and get them more resources. That's more it rare. Can be successful. I think that's probably 20% of the time. I think 80% mm -hmm. of the time it gets, it gets folded in and 
profit becomes, you know, they have to report to a board and it becomes about profit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're cutting in whatever's about, most profitable. It becomes about revenue generation yep. and margin on that revenue. Correct. Those are the two things they're going to be looking at. Are they making margin? They have to go to a board and they say, have, yeah, yeah, we're, that, we're yeah. making ultimately, margin on this purchase or not. Ultimately, they're, you know, they have to look to that board for that investment. And unfortunately, in those situations, bad decisions can be made that can affect quality. Right. So it's all because, about what they do with it. Hopefully, because, hopefully right. they're yeah. responsible and want to make it. Because it gets to be about cost cutting, right? Because yeah. we spent money to acquire this. Now we got to put more money mm -hmm. to make it make more money. Right. And usually boards are like, mm, yeah. No. And really, what is what was the original intent in purchasing sure. mm -hmm. yep. one of your competitors, right? Was it to build that brand even better than yep. your own brands that you currently have? Or was it to take, take a chess piece off the board? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. A lot of times, Jim, you're right. It's taking, just taking the, when it's an IBM or, you know, right. it's taking the chess piece off the board, basically. Yeah. So, and that's, that's right. why I'm interested to see what happens five years from now. Well, I think you're, you're going to see less creative skews, but you're going to see better product. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So, no, no, so like someone like Matt Booth, Always had to create something new. He was a smaller company. Room 101 was smaller. Always had to create something new to stay in the limelight, stay in the limelight. There will be less skews, but I think the quality of the product will be pretty significant when they have product releases. Yeah. And when they start to collaborate is going to be super cool. I do agree with you that, you know, that, you know, say they came up with 10 new sticks every two years or something mm -hmm. like that. It might be five every two years. Because again, right. they do want to take a chess piece off the board. Yeah. But STG committed to acquiring two more companies besides because their number was four. And so they've already done two. So there's two more. So you can start to speculate like, what would they buy? Would they buy another smaller version like Matt Booth or would they yeah. turn around and buy an Alec Bradley for 72.5 million? I don't know. Yeah. I, think I mean, I you think can also look at the beer industry, you know, the craft beer mm -hmm. industry. You know, it, it was really booming uh, tremendously. And then you had large uh, organizations purchasing these smaller breweries and moving their production from the small brewery to the large facilities and the quality of the product goes down. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. But the quantity went up. Now, suddenly you can get, right. you know. Uh, this certain beer across the whole U.S., whereas before you can only get in California. Right. And they're going to be looking at operational efficiencies. How yeah. do we get efficiency yeah. in our operations to produce more? Right. And the question becomes, right. does, the, does the quality sustain? Right now, STG has 34 key brands, not every brand, mm -hmm. what they consider key brands. There's 34 they need to manage now. And I, see, I, 34. That's a lot. I got confused. It used to be that General Cigar and Altidus held the the rights, and I'm not sure if there was legal battles that ensued for all of the Cuban brands in the U.S., right? Because Cohiba, yep. Cohiba yep. that can be distributed in the U.S. that's not made in uh, Cuba, and then there's Cohiba that comes from Cuba. STG owns Cohiba U.S. Right, and I thought that was General Cigar or Altidus, but Altidus was bought by Imperial Brands, and... It's very, it's very confusing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need like a doc, someone should do a documentary <laughs> on like we need, the a mind origins, map. we need a mind map. <laughs> the origins of Cohiba, uh, Monte Cristo, yeah, right, uh, right, right. Bolivar, mm -hmm. you know, all those original Cuban brands that people started, companies started marketing those brands in the U.S. after the embargo using non-Cuban tobacco. Mm -hmm. I don't think many of them had official legal rights to do that. There was some controversy that I remember talking about, but then those brands got split into different companies, and now those companies have been acquired by larger companies. Yep. And I just I think it's fascinating. I don't have the full map because yeah, it would probably yeah. take us two hours to go through Seriously, the whole it really would. Uh, history behind. We that. should do a show on that though. We should do some. We research. should. We should do a, do some yeah. research, and then bring it out and kind of talk through that that timeline. Mm. I think it'd be and cool. I just learned actually last night at the lounge uh, about how much tobacco China is producing now. Oh, well, that's interesting. I've never and had a Chinese you, cigar before. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And uh, Puerto Rico makes its own, mm -hmm. has its own brands of cigars. Yeah, they do. Yep. There are some, some countries that you wouldn't think have their own, like grow their own tobacco and make their mm -hmm. own uh, cigars. We know the popular ones because that's what ends up in most of the cigars yeah, we smoke yeah. today, but there's a whole 
the whole thing. Yeah, so I mean, interesting that uh, you know all this consolidation is happening, and, mm-hmm. and yet to be determined on the quality, right? I mean, I want to I want to see how this all plays out. For sure. Um. Oh, celebrities who smoke. Hmm. Michael Jordan. I don't. The kids in the neighborhood are like, are like really into basketball now. Yeah. And totally. they're, they're consuming all this content on the internet. Yep. And so you know, all this content on the internet is debating who's the greatest basketball player mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's kind of interesting. I like Michael Jordan. And one of the reasons I like sure. Michael Jordan is because he's a cigar advocate. Yep. Right? Same here. I also like Larry Bird because we're from New England. And exactly. Celtics. Yeah, I mean, right. there's tons going on. You know, Jordan versus LeBron and, and all yeah. of that going on. And who the best, you know, who the GOAT is. But, yeah, I mean, I grew up in that time period, too, where Jordan, right. you know, I mean. We're, we're very biased. Totally. Because totally, I'll, I'll tell the kids, I'm like. But you never saw Michael Jordan play. Right. And then I'm like, wait, I really didn't watch a lot of LeBron play. Either, so we're kind of, <laughs> okay, right, right, like right, I get right. it. Um, yeah, and I mean, if, if you start talking about OG cigar smokers in 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 basketball, Red Orbach. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The owner of the Celtics. I mean, Jesus, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of him without a cigar in his mouth. But now I'm now I'm Google searching for, like, content to show the kids mm-hmm. to, to, like, mm-hmm. you know, show them, like, you've never seen Jordan play. you got to see clips. Right. So now when I go on social media, that all gets fed to me now. And <laughs> yeah. I saw one of the games that was probably from 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. when Bird and Jordan were playing each other. Yep. Like, what was that time frame? Had to be late 80s, yeah, totally, early 90s, totally. right? Yep. And they're playing a game. And Jordan's just on fire. And the quote that got me, and I told my kids this quote this morning after I watched the video, I said, Bird after that game says um, something along the lines of, uh, I, I wasn't playing Michael Jordan. I was playing God impersonating Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that <game>. awesome. <laughs> I thought yeah, that was pretty. Yeah. So I keep, I, mean, that, I keep that in mind when we have the debate that that quote was, was right, said. Right. <laughs> you know. Yep. And I mean, we we talked about Jordan and his affinity for cigars, mm. where he built his own cigar lounge in his mansion. I, I can't remember the exact number, but I think he had like hundreds yeah. upon hundreds of thousand dollars worth of cigars in his own personal humidor. Like, I, I, just unbelievable. I mean, he was such a such a cigar aficionado. At the end of the day, yes. Um, but again, our time frame. You know, it's. I think I have 80%, if not 90%, of the Sports Illustrated covers with Jordan on them. Right. You know, at home, in a a box, you know, because I I love Jordan at that time. You know what I mean? He was was the the premier basketball player of my generation. He liked Apartigas Lusitania. Yes. (laughs) That's a classic Cuban cigar. And that's an expensive cigar. It's an awesome cigar. It's an I awesome think I've, cigar. I've smoked I, that cigar I, a couple I, times. I need to get some, but I want to say last time I checked, it was like two thousand dollars for fifteen or ten or something. Oh, really? It was insane. Hold on, I think I can find it. I'll find it really quick. Super. Expensive. The Cuban version. Yes. 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 Hold on, I'll find it. You know, going back to the question of how many, what percentage of the American population smokes cigars, I have a better question. What percentage of the cybersecurity Infosec mm. people <laughs> smoke cigars, yeah, right? Because we, well, we're biased on that because we tend to hang out with, yeah, at cybersecurity conferences, other people that smoke cigars, mm-hmm. right? And so we think there's a lot because when we go to conferences, we're like, oh, everyone hang out and smoke cigars, so, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but there usually is a contingency. So what Jeff was telling me when I go to the conference next weekend is that he's like, there's a contingency of cigar smokers that sit in this particular spot in the hotel where the conference is uh, taking place and we all have cigars. So we all bring our own, you know, cigars and, and booze and we commiserate in, in this area and we should hang out there. I'm like, yes, that's where I want to be at the at the conference. DerbyCon was was famous for that too. Hang out in the front and I would go out and have mm-hmm. a cigar and all of a sudden people would just show up and you're like, oh, you're in cigars too. Like, cool. Yeah. But, but going back to how can we get more people into our social club called cigars. Yes. You know, I see a lot of below the age of 30 year olds not smoking cigars in, in sure. InfoSec. Sure. Yeah. No, I agree. Cause I was really shocked when my nephew and his friends were like, Oh, we love cigars. And we had a graduation party for Which him. Which I happened to smoke a cigar with your nephew <laughs> yes, one day. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was into He's it, man. Digging it. And with all totally his friends, I'm like, how yeah, did you guys yeah. get it? 
get in. Maybe I was like a, the positive influence in that respect by him always seeing me because he would come over and have barbecue. I'd always have a cigar. And again, it, 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 it some of it's influence, right? Because I told I've told you guys the stories of my son and I. We'll go. We're fish. We love to go mm. fishing, right? Mm-hmm. We love it. Absolutely love it. Him and I will be out in a canoe. He'll be in the front. I'll be in the back because I'm the you know I'm the engine. I'm the motor. I'm the one paddling yep. while he's fishing. Basically, is what it boils <laughs> down to, right? And you know he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. I'll pull out a stick. I'll lay a stick. I'm in the back of the canoe, and he'll lift his head up and go, and just sniff and go. God, I love the smell of cigars, Dad. Well, he now, will be a cigar smoker when he turns eighteen. He, I can he, guarantee it. But he now he associates the smell of cigars with, our with fishing. With, with our our fishing, relation, yeah, well, our relationship, yeah, right? right? The relationship that yes, he has with his too. dad. Yeah, he's going to associate that. And you know, I can see him at eighteen years old being dad. It's time. <laughs> my dude, my you know? dad, my dad was funny. My dad passed away a few years ago, but um, he went on. Uh, used to go on vacation to Aruba, and. Uh, he would stuff his socks <laughs> with <laughs> Cuban cigars wrapped in cellophane. Really? And he would stuff them all in his socks. <laughs> so when he got, I think he used to take a cruise. So he got mm-hmm. off the cruise ship. Uh, he was basically smuggling back all these Cuban cigars. Yep. Uh, and we would be in North Carolina mm-hmm. where we'd go fishing all the time. Yep, we'd yep. sit on the back porch and we would smoke Cuban cigars. And we'd also in North Carolina go to J.R. Cigar, who ironically posted the article about Jordan. Yeah. Um, there was a J.R. Cigars uh, in, in the 90s in mm-hmm. North Carolina. And we'd go there and shop for cigars and yep. we'd sit on the porch and, and smoke cigars. Now, is, is your relationship with your dad what got you interested in cigars? Oh, yeah. 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 See, that's the same thing. Yeah. Like, I see my son yeah. as, it was, that, as that, right. you know... Eight years from now, or six right. years from now, when he's eighteen, I see that sim. It's going to be that similar relationship, right? Yeah. Because I'm sure you have memories. I don't of even know if kid. I was eighteen at the time. I might have been in high school. Well, yeah, I, I, and it was I, the nineties. And it was like, oh, you're gonna it's like the what prompted it was like, oh, like you're old enough now because the nineties you're in high school, like you can smoke whatever. And we go to JRs and. And like, I'm not I'd, saying that won't be the case, but right? I'm just not letting mom know that. Uh, yeah, don't tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> and we go to the cigar store, and I'd pick out a Macanudo Portofino with yep, my favorite yep, cigar yep, at the time because yep, it was a light cigar. Yep. It came in a tube. I remember that cigar. And that's yeah, and that's yeah, that's yeah. what we that's what I would smoke. He would smoke you know different cigars, sure. but yeah, yeah, we'd that's sit awesome. it on the back screen. And I, porch I see that happening, cigars. right? I see that happening where he's gonna he's gonna associate cigars with his relationship with dad, and he's gonna be eighteen years old, and he's gonna be smoking cigars, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll be I, before I think, eighteen. Oh yeah, totally, 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 <laughs> totally. It will be. It will be. At DEFCON, they should have they should allow smoking in the CTF. <laughs> yeah. Why Can not? you imagine three oh days straight? God. You know, in oh the CTF. God. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, Partagas, 2011 Lusitanius on one of our favorite shops. Mm-hmm. 2100 for a box of 25. Wow. 7.6 wow. ring gauge 49. That's uh, and you gotta you gotta see what makes me cringe when I think about that is how many of those are going to be plugged or not. Oh, smoked. I know. I think, I think the last time you told me at least 20% are yeah. plugged. And there, a plugged cigar, is there any coming back from it? Can you, can you mm. fix well, that? Well, a lot of Cubans, no. No, it's just too... Because the too, wrap is so delicate. Yeah. Like yes. the wrapper, too much. Uh, you have a polka from that guy who was a And that's surgeon. what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have one of those cigar daggers, really, really thin poker. It's yeah. nice and long. And I'm always like, well, if I do order Cubans and they're plugged, can I, can I use that to fix it? Paul has one. Do you still have that? I think so. Yeah, very small percentage of the time can you poke it and yeah. have it come back to life. Because yeah. what happened? You, when you poke a cigar, you got to remove tobacco from it, and it just doesn't scrape out enough right, tobacco right, right. Uh, to unplug it. I do have to say, I was smoking a Bolivar. It's funny. It's called Bolivar Royal Coronas, mm-hmm. but it's a robusto. <laughs> <laughs> It, really fast. Uh, I, I'm moving on to old Rip Van Winkle now. Ooh, Ooh nice. Nice. Look at you. Jealous. So if anybody wants to invest in $84 a stick mm. <laughs> and, and go buy a box of 25, <laughs> uh, I, I'm game to invest. I'll go I'll go thirds or whatever we want to do, but I'd, I'd love to smoke a Lusitania. I've never smoked a Lusitania. And, and you guys know my descent is Portuguese. Mm. Lusitania is a thing for for Portuguese descent, right? So oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the Bolivar Royal Coronas were really good, by the way. Those are probably as old as those Lusitanias you're talking mm-hmm. about. They're mm-hmm. probably around the same uh, age. If I think about when I was buying like hum- and tried to keep them kicking around in my humidor, probably mm-hmm. not as old as that, but yeah. pretty pretty close. 
Uh, and they're smoking really good right now. Are they? Yeah, I smoked a couple, and they're really good. Yeah. So if if, if anybody wants to go in with me, I might I might throw down <laughs> for Lusitanius. Yeah, I might throw down. Ah, I just I, I know, eighty four dollars a stick, man. That's well, a, and I, uh, if it's gonna be plugged, I, uh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's the risk. <laughs> Right. That's why I like smoking Davidoff. See? Jim's got, Jim's, <laughs> right, right. The drones. Exactly. I know, Thank I know. you. Yeah. That's why I haven't ordered a lot of Cubans. I'm like, if I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to do Davidoff or Padron. Yeah, I know. I feel you. So uh, we have to wrap the show up. Yeah. <clears throat> but thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. We'll see you next time.